heartbroken and disgusted at the same time. Hey, Bill, I'm a 22-year-old female from Massachusetts. Been tuned into your podcast to add a laugh to my day for about a year and a half. I don't know, though. That was just a wild fucking guess. Anyway, I'm writing in on the off chance that you give the urge to this depressing email. I don't want to read a depressing fucking email. All right, I get it. Times are tough out there. All right. I have spoken to my therapist who only states the obvious family members, even my pastor about this, and no one can give me actual advice that seeps into my mind. Oh, so this is your Hail Mary. Okay. Talking to some old guy who can barely read out loud. All right. Take this advice at your own risk. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I, I got something to lift your spirits. Here we go. Come on. Play it. Why won't it play? What the fuck happened? I was trying to lift your spirits. It's time. Hey! Whoa! With your host, Billy Burns. And a little bit of this melody from somebody else. All right. Okay, here's the deal. I, I stick to myself because I don't trust or like people. I find them boring, unsatisfying, and mean overall. I grow bored easily, so just focus on studies, exercising, diet, and extra fucking curriculars like checking out guys no matter how old or young and watching a lot of porn. All right, here we go. This sounds like a Netflix series about a fucking serial killer. I also got my gun license recently. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, one day at yoga, a guy caught my eye. He pursued me, and I followed it. I allowed it for the first time at age 22. I've been on dates but never called for another one or like the guy. Well, this one dominated my every thought, and I actually wanted to have sex for the first time. Okay, all right. Oh, boy. Fast forward seven months later, and we had sex three weeks ago. What? Then he slowly started avoiding me at yoga, switched studios, and says he feels weird about seeing me because it isn't just a hookup or a one-night stand, and he isn't used to having feelings. Oh, boy. Can I tell you something? As a woman, this is, I, I think this is part of you of being with guys in their 20s. That's how we all are. You know, we don't know to just say, listen, I just want to bang you. I'm looking to bang. That's what I'm into right now. I don't want to be tied down. I'm attracted to you. I want to bang. I want to fuck your brains out. That's what I, if that's not what you want to do, don't talk to me. That's what you do. And believe it or not, you can fucking be honest with people. And there's some woman out there who also doesn't want to be in a fucking relationship. But she wants to get banged. And then boom, bang, boom. Safe sex. Great. And then you leave each other alone. Anyway, I confronted him and he said that I am expecting a relationship from home, which he cannot give because he's too busy with work and he just doesn't like relationships. But wait, he was, he pursued you for seven months. I'm really angry. Well, you should be and worried about him too. I can't focus on myself because of this guy. Where does the gun come into all of this? Oh uh, boy. I can't focus on myself because of this guy. He won't even answer my texts anymore, and I'm making a fool out of myself. I trusted him with my virginity, and he just turned away because he feels something for me. Could you get Nia's lady opinion on this too, as well as your own tough, realistic advice? Thank you, Bill. And I would say go fuck yourself, but honestly, I cannot do to the level of respect I have for you. By the way, he was 30. Oh. Um, all right. Unfortunately, you're not going to go out into the dating world without getting hurt. All right. And in a good way, it's good that you got hurt like this in the beginning. All right. To get it out of the way. All right. And just because you had a bad experience with this person doesn't mean that, you know, every guy's going to be this way. They're not. You just have to find the person, you know, that you should be with, which involves looking Okay, so you got to get back out there. I mean, it's just like it's like finding love is not is the same as trying to make it as a comedian. It's not like you walk on stage and you just know 
how to do an hour and kill. You got to you got to bomb. Everything in life is just getting through bombing. Anything worth having in life is just is is that's how it works. All right. You you have to go through pain in order to uh, get to pleasure, to get to success or whatever the hell that is you want. You got to work. All right. And um, so I don't know. I don't know what your gun license had to do with anything, but please don't don't do anything other than target shooting or if you want to go hunting. Um, other than that, uh, I don't want to tell you. Yeah. You met an asshole in a fucking yoga class and, uh, you know, I don't know. We, we've all met assholes and it's just, it's just, I mean, not, now you got a story. You got a funny story to tell what the fuck you're going to do. And, uh, I would, uh, I just keep it moving. I wouldn't waste any more time thinking about that guy. I mean, if you get outside the fact that, you know, what he did to you, I mean, that guy's pretty pathetic, you know? It could have been worse. You could have actually fucking got into a relationship with him and married the guy and had fucking kids with that asshole. And then he could have left. So you got off easy. All right? Everything's all good. So, I don't know. I hope I'm giving you good advice. You just freaked me out with the gun thing in the beginning. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it really had nothing to do with the story. Um, so I hope I helped you out. Uh, I'm sorry that happened to you. And I just think, uh, you know, shake it off. You know, there, don't shake it off. Allow yourself to go through the emotions of what this guy did to you. It was fucking bullshit and cowardly and all that. And he's old enough. He's fucking old, 30 years old. You shouldn't be out there doing that shit. All right. You shouldn't be out there fucking doing that. Especially if it's your first time you told him that and he still fucking did it. That guy's a piece of shit, and you should rightfully be upset. But none of your being upset should involve your new gun license, if you know what I mean. All right? With that, you know, go out and try to meet a nice person. You, what you're going to do is you're the more you date, the more you're going to be able to pick out fucking assholes. You're going to listen to your gut. That's what's going to happen. That happened to me the other day. I fucking had lunch with somebody, and I just said, to somebody afterwards, how well do you know that person? He said, pretty well. I go, what happens when that when her claws come out? And, she, oh, yeah, she has a temper. But I was like, eh, that's what I thought. That's That was my gut. She answered a couple of fucking questions, and I was like, ooh. There's a little fucking a little hot sauce on that. Um, all right, so that's it. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, in life, you got to go through pain, and it's happening to you, but uh, you will survive it. And you will meet a great person if you look. But if you stop looking, you won't. All right? It's all up to you. All right. Sexist comment. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, <laughs> that could be an alter, alternate name for this podcast. Hey, Billy Rednuts, my over 60-year-old South African boss got himself in all kinds of trouble for commenting. Uh, it's nice to see a woman doing dishes to a lady at our work. <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea that it was it was offensive or why he had to apologize. Go fuck yourself. That's hilarious. I, I I agree with that. In my life, it is nice to see a woman doing dishes or cooking or doing any of that. They seem to like feel that they are above that. Um, so many of them, you know, and that guys should continue to fucking earn money and pay for shit and wash dishes and fucking cook. It's ridiculous. Um, I, I agree with that guy. I fucking do 80% of the dishes in my house. It's just what it is. All right. Hey, rice and beans. Hey, fuck nuts. Uh, my wife typed out her family's red beans and rice recipe and sent it to me. It's easily the best I've ever had. Oh, there it is. Get the fuck out of here. All right. Oh, we got, oh my God. Oh, we got some garlic in there. We got a bell pepper. I love celery. I'll tell you one of the best things at the farmer's market is if you get actual organic celery, it's on the next fucking level because it's such a forgettable fucking vegetable, right? I'll tell you, when you go to a farmer's market, that's like going into a cigar bar and trying to actually find a real Cuban. Everybody says what's in there is organic and so much of it fucking isn't. Um, it's really a Dutch master with the fucking Cohiba fucking band. 
Uh, we got bay leaves, cayenne pepper. We got thyme, sage, parsley. Oh, my God. We got some sausage in there. What? Are you fucking kidding? I am making this shit, baby. They heat the skillet. Da, 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 da. I like this seems actually a little healthier too because I don't see any shortening in there. That's what scared me. Um, oh fuck yeah, I'm making this. I love it. I love it. Okay. Anyway, that is the podcast. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs, the people of Kansas City, and the San Francisco 49ers. I am rooting for Kansas City because I'm rooting for their fans to get their first Super Bowl chance. However, I don't think there's a chance in fucking hell that they're going to beat the fucking San Francisco 49ers because it's going to come down to defense and they just, San Francisco has a better one. That's it. That's it. And that's it. I hate to tell you, but that's what I think is going to happen. I hope I'm fucking wrong. I don't hope I'm wrong. You know what? Because I love San Francisco and I love Kansas City. Two great fucking teams. Uh... I have to, and I'm just going to root for Kansas City because it's been so long since they won one. That's it. All right. That's the tail of the tape, but I'm fucking something, something. All right. That's it. Go fuck yourselves. Uh, and I will check in on you on Thursday. All right. Anyway, my parents hate my stripper girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Here we go. <laughs> it's a bit of a left turn here. All right. My uh, my parents hate my stripper girlfriend. Hey, Billy the Fat Kid. Uh, longtime listener, first time writer. First off, I was at your show in Atlanta. It was awesome. You killed it, so keep doing that. All right, thank you. My parents hate my girlfriend. I'm a 26-year-old chemical engineer. And I accidentally had a baby with my girlfriend who just happens to be a part-time stripper. Part-time stripper. No, part-time stripper. What song was that? Part-time lover. Part-time stripper. Is that Stevie Wonder? Oh, yeah, Stevie Wonder. Part-time lover. Um, oh boy, dude, chemical engineer. She's a part-time stripper. We met at the gym, comma, chill. Oh, telling me to chill. Well, listen, buddy, I'm not the one coming at you. Your family is, so don't fucking tell me to relax. I'm happy for you. I mean, I don't even had a kid with her, but you know, okay. Um, it's been causing a lot of strain on our relationship as I'm trying to make everyone happy. My parents hate her and she hates them. Oh, boy. I'd love to hear the advice from an older man who obviously has everything figured out. As always, keep up the jokes and go fuck yourself. Um, well, if you want to make your relationship work, all right, you have to choose your partner. And if that means, you know, putting your parents in check, that's what you have to do. This kind of goes back to the other thing. Like that woman inviting this fucking asshole that her husband-to-be doesn't like. If a relationship's going to work, she has to hear him and has to honor what he's saying. That's it. So, um, wow, hate's a strong word. If they hate her, how, why do they hate her? Is it because she's a stripper? Do they feel she got knocked up on purpose? Um... I mean, I got to be honest with you. There's not too many, I don't know too many 26-year-old chemical engineers that knocked up a stripper. You know what I mean? I mean, that's like, uh, that's still just like your girlfriend. I mean, dude, you got to be the fucking wildest chemical engineer I've ever heard in my life. I mean, this is like some rock star shit. Um, it seems like you're sort of like in this zen place in between the two of them. Uh, I would just go to your parents and just say, listen, that woman's in my life now. We have a kid together. She's not going anywhere. All right. If you hate her and she hates you guys, this is just going to like uh, end up affecting our relationship. So I need you guys to be adults about this. All right. I mean, I don't know how you feel about this woman. You know, 
You're just calling her your girlfriend. You, you didn't say once that you loved her. You just said you'd love to hear my advice. Um, so I'm assuming that you love this person. But you said you accidentally had a baby. I mean, I, I don't know. Okay. You met at the gym. But she's only a part-time stripper. Part well, if you stop knocking her up, maybe she could be fucking full-time. Bringing some money into the house. Um, yeah, I would just sit there. Look, at it, this woman is in your life at least for the next 18 to 22 years is basically it, no matter what happens, because you guys have a kid together. So you need your parents to fucking relax and just deal with the fact that she knocked up a part-time stripper. I met her at the gym when she was at the squat machine. She wore spandex and my dick got hot. We banged outside by the dumpster and the steroid fucking needles. We had a kid. Now my parents are pissed. Dude, I can't solve this fucking problem. All right, you're a chemical engineer. You're smarter than I am. You can't reverse engineer this shit and get your parents to fucking like her. I don't know what to do with this. Who the fuck is a part-time stripper? I mean, you, are you doing it? Or you know, what is she doing the other... like a geologist you just can't commit you know it's like i really like geology but stripping pays so much better part time geologist what does a geologist do huh it's not a paleontologist you know there's actually a period of time in my life where i wanted to be a paleontologist i mean i don't know i mean i took liking dinosaurs to a whole you know every fucking kid boy or girl loves dinosaurs i don't know what it is about them they just fucking love them and I was so into it, I actually thought that I wanted to spend my life fucking digging around Egypt or some shit, trying to find these goddamn things. Thank God. Uh, I really feel like the only thing worse than not finding any bones would be finding the bones. And then you gotta be like, oh, 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 and start taking out your little brush, gradually fucking excavating it. Um, how the fuck do you even know where to... I guess nowadays they probably have some sort of like a fish finder, but like for dinosaurs. But how the fuck did they do that back in the day? I don't think they, you, you could do it. You just had to wait for a fucking farmer to be planting turnips or something and he came across a, I don't know, a skull or some shit. I don't know. I really don't know a lot of things. All I know is the football season is over. Oh boy. Hey, but hi, Bill, you cunt. I'm an 18 year old from England and I need some advice. All right, you pasty, crooked teeth douche. Around two months ago, one of my sister's childhood friends came to visit her for a weekend. They've been friends since they were three and she moved five hours away when she was 12. So they barely see each other anymore. They were planning to go out on Saturday with a group of friends. Say, and I was planning on staying home alone. When my sister went to pick up a few of her friends to meet at our house, me and her friends flirted a bit, but nothing major. We exchanged Snapchats, etc. I love how that's flirting now. Long, t long story short, my sister's friend pretended to be ill and came home early so we could hook up. Dude, you are fucking crushing it. Your sister's bringing them home to you. You don't even have to go out. Good for you. The only thing was my sister was genuinely ill and also came home early around 30 minutes after her friend and she caught us in bed together. Well, what the fuck is she doing walking into your bedroom? My sister got insanely angry and stormed out. Oh, you should have said, hey, don't hate the player. Hit the game. <laughs> and then just lit a cigarette. Oh, my God. I think this is fucking funny. This is fucking hilarious. Dude, do you realize how hard you're crushing it? You're fucking at home. You're not even trying to get laid. She just has her friends come over for the bullshit. Okay, ladies, you're ready to go out. And in that moment, whatever the fuck you did made one of them pretend to be sick and come back and hook up with you. Dude, you're a fucking hero. 
There's no reason to get. Oh, I don't care how mad your sister gets. Just I would just just keep smiling and just be like, hey, I can't help it, man. The la- I, you know the ladies love me, sweetheart, sweetheart. I wasn't trying to hook up. I was at home. I I, I was innocent. I I can't help it. If women are attracted to me, I would just go totally fucking arrogant. And no matter she get, I would just keep laughing and I would never take it seriously. Uh, my sister has suffered with depression and anxiety. All right. Forget what I just said. <laughs> I didn't see that part. My sister has suffered with depression. And I'm so excited for you that I, I didn't even read this next part. She suffered with depression and anxiety for years. So whenever something like this happens, my family almost always sides with her. Oh, that's easy. Then you just divide and conquer with your, with your dad. Just be like, Dad, I can't help it. I, I, I inherited your charisma. What do, what do you want from me? She, I, I, didn't, I didn't go out with... She came home to me. It, fe, it fell right in my lap. What was I supposed to do? Dad, what was I supposed to do? You know, and he'll... I don't know. There's no fucking way I get mad at my kid. In the morning... I mean, he's mad because you're making her upset. But he's not mad at what you did. I'm guaranteed your dad's telling his friends at work. This fucking this son of a bitch didn't have to leave the fucking house. They're coming. They're coming to him. Uh, in the morning, she threatened to never talk to me again for what I did, but I said something along the, so- the lines of, "I feel a connection with her," <laughs> or some bullshit like that to calm my sister down. The thing was, I didn't, but her friend did. Oh no! We started dating. And after around two weeks, I, re- I realized that I fucking hated this girl. She is generally stupid as shit. Yeah, dude, this is all good. This is all good stuff because you're learning lessons, which you're supposed to in life, especially at 18. Okay, this whole thing started with a lie. Okay, and that you did to protect your sister's feelings. So you just got to come clean. You got to dump the dummy and just tell her, like, listen, I love you so much that I actually started dating somebody that is fucking stupid. All right. I'm sorry. You have, and then she'll get mad that you'll be like, he's calling her friend stupid. Are you saying my friends are stupid? No, I'm saying that friend that is a friend of you is stupid. The other ones seem really smart and, you know, tell all of them I wouldn't mind if they faked six and came home and hooked up with me. <laughs> all right. I realized that I fucking hated this girl. She's generally stupid as shit. My original plan was to pretend I was into her for a few months and then when I go to university um, in a few months I break up with her because of the long distance. Dude, don't do that because you might break her heart. All right, But that's some dumb shit you do when you're 18. Uh, that way I'd save my relationship with my sister and, and mother and get rid of this stupid bitch. Hey, 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 hey. Don't talk about women. You don't need to talk about them like that, okay? Feel lucky that, you, you know, you got a better brain than she did. Yeah, don't don't play with people's feelings like that. All right. Because I'm telling you right now that you, that if you're any sort of an actual human being uh, breaking somebody's heart, the guilt of that never fucking goes away. Um, however, I recently received news that my first choice university turned me down and my second choice was the only one that accepted me. The problem is she lives 15 minutes away from my second choice university and now i don't know what to do you got to come clean i can't go through university hitched to a girl i fucking hate but i can't afford to risk my relationship with my family for obvious reasons also another girl who i think i generally may have a connection with recently broke up with her boyfriend in two years and i'm pretty sure that if i could if i could we would be dating right now uh it also doesn't help that this girl is a nine out of ten looking model and I'm probably a six and a half out of ten at best. Thanks for your help, you freckled twat. All right, dude, this is what you're going to learn. You're going to learn uh, honesty here. All right? Um, fucking break up with that woman today. All right? And you have to come clean with everybody in your house. And you have to say... You know, you have to put your foot down that you, you, your parents cannot be choosing. I, maybe I would have this conversation with your parents. They can't be choosing your sister over you straight across the board because of your sister's depression and anxiety issues. Okay? I don't know how severe they are. All right?
right? If they're chemical, then yeah, that's a major problem. But you know, if she just needs to fucking, you know, get out of a funk, then I don't know. I don't know where she is on the whole depression spectrum, if that's the proper thing. But like, you shouldn't have to be suffering like this, dude. You got to live your own fucking life. All right. Just live your life. Live your life. When you live your life, sometimes people are going to get hurt. All right. Fuck that. Break up with this woman and go ask the other woman out. That's it. That's what the fuck you do. And if anybody in your family has a problem with it, let them vent to you and all that stuff and just say, I'm sorry that I am doing what my heart is telling me to do. All right. I am not trying to hurt anybody in this family. Had I known that hooking up with that girl was going to uh, cause this level of, of drama, I wouldn't have done it. I regret that I did it. I actually felt so bad that I actually fucking dated her for two weeks the whole time. And it was like talking to a fucking chair. Say all this stuff nicely. All right. There's a woman that I like that I want to pursue, and I'm going to do that. And if that's wrong, then God damn it, I don't want to be right. And walk out. Okay? And don't let them hold your sister's fucking problems over your goddamn head. Because that's good. Look, look, look what it's already doing. It's causing you to fucking date people you don't want to date. So then she's going to be depressed, and you're going to be living this life of fucking misery because you didn't do what you wanted. Okay? Now, having said that, don't call women bitches. All right? Don't do that. I'm not saying don't call them out on their shit and stand your ground, but they, they, don't don't ever do the name calling thing, all right? Because it's it doesn't uh, it gets you. It, not only does it, it makes the other person not hear what your point is, then they can bring that up for the rest of your fucking relationship, and God knows they're gonna do it. All right, that's the fucking podcast. Oh fuck yourselves! I'll check in on you on Thursday. Bye bye. Boyfriend doesn't want to get married. He doesn't want to get married. Hey, Billford, I love the podcast. Thanks for being yourself. I was hoping to get some dating advice. All right. Well, I'm a fucked up dude, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, my boyfriend and I have been dating for two years and living together for a year and a half. I'm 31 and he's 38. We both have educations and good jobs. He doesn't want to get married and he's 38. Yeah, you got to kick him to the curb. He ain't going to get there. Um, he's a great guy. He's not going to get there in a time where you still have, like, if you want to have kids. I would guess. That's my first, that's the first thought I had. He's a great guy. He's very sweet, respectful, and makes me laugh. His family is lovely as well. He's a musician and loves music as much as I do. I love our life together as it is, but it's our future I'm worried about. I want to get married and have a kid or two. He's indecisive about it. He's an indecisive person in general. I've dropped some heavy hints and frequently talk about a hypothetical future when we have kids and we're married, but he's just not into it. Yeah, he's not into it or he's afraid of it the way I was. Um... But I can tell you, like, it's, it's added to my stand-up and all the creative things that I do having kids. So maybe you can tell them that. Because um, I know with a lot of people in this business trying to make it, you try to travel light because you feel like, I got to get to this certain place and then I can actually have a life. And you think you're getting to that place is actually going to bring you happiness when what really could bring you happiness is just finding love, you know, and having a couple of kids and trying to make sure that they have the best possible childhood will fill you up so much more than all of that other dumb shit, which took me half a century to fill up, figure out. Um, anyway, uh, I've tried to be being extra sweet, cooking all his favorite meals every night, making sure the house is always clean and babying him when he gets sick. I'm even supported of his dream of quitting his good job to be a writer and a musician. However, all my efforts don't seem to be working because he is still isn't willing to compromise on the marriage and kids thing. It makes me really sad, especially the kid part. It worries me because, well, biology. I'm already 31 and I can't be waiting forever. My family and friends say I should give him an ultimatum, but I don't want to because, one, what if he calls my bluff? I, I love him and I really want to spend the rest of my life with him. Two, I have pride, self-esteem, and self-worth, even though I'm not exactly God's gift to mankind. What are you talking about? You're a great, you sound like a great person. I'm not a piece of shit either and shouldn't have to threaten a man to marry me. Am I doing something wrong? Am I being nutty or do I need to move on? Fuck you and thanks. Um, I don't think you're nutty at all. I think you, you don't have to put pressure on him. Just say what you just said to me. Just say you not you being unwilling to compromise about getting married and having kids makes me really sad, especially the kid part. You know, 
I don't have all the time. This is what I want, and I want to do it with you, okay? And I don't want to give you an ultimatum, all right? I just want you to be honest with me, okay? And then tell him, this is, this is when I want to do this, bye. Which also gives him another way to fucking string you along. And I would just say, listen, it's going to break my heart to leave you, but I am not going to be childless. That's not what I want. That's not going to make me happy. I want to get married and start a family with you. Do you want to do that with me? Okay. And I have to be honest with you. His answer is if it's yes, would be right then and there. If he's like, you know, I just don't fucking do it. I would leave, leave and go through the fucking heartbreak of that shit rather than live a whole life of wondering what could have been. All right. That's my advice to you. And never feel bad for expressing your feelings. And, and you don't have to give ultimatums to people. You just tell them how you're feeling, how what they're doing is making you feel. And they're either receptive to it or they're not. If they're not receptive to it, you know, you got to get to someone who's going to be receptive or that's going to be your day-to-day existence, which is going to drive you into depression. All right? And if they want what you want, the cart moves forward. If it doesn't, hey, you know, no hard feelings. This kills me to do this, but like, you know, I want what I want. And what you want is just as important as what he wants. So that's the deal. You get with somebody, you got to want basically the same shit or it's not going to work. All right. Sorry you're going through that. Good luck to you. Okay. Boyfriend's Facebook. Oh, this is never good. All right. Hi, Bill. Straight to the point. Me and my boyfriend, we've been together for two years now and we're happy. Smiley face. The thing that concerns me is that a few times on his Facebook Messenger, I saw that he is writing on a weekly basis with an ex-college colleague of his, a beautiful young lady. The thing is that they were close at work back then, but he quit three months ago. And I just don't believe in male-female friendships. I'm talking from experience. Also, when we were want, basically, if I, you know, if we're having a conversation, if we're talking, eventually we're going to fuck is what you're saying. Also, (laughs) when we're watching some videos and stuff on his on his phone in the search field, I saw a list of a few girls names. Other than that, he has been great to me and hasn't shown any signs of a man whore yet. Am I too suspicious or do I have the right to worry? Thanks and go fuck yourself. I don't fuck. That's not enough. That's not enough information. Um, I wouldn't, you know, this ex-colleague that's a beautiful lady. Yeah, that's weird. That's You're right. That's fucking weird. Um, I don't know about the, the fucking phone shit. That's, uh, I have no idea. I have no idea what that's about. But that, that thing there, yeah, that's definitely a red flag. You know what I mean? Like, well, put yourself in his position. If you were fucking you know, close with some guy and you left the job three months ago and you still chat on Facebook and, you know, here's the thing about women that they can sit there and be like, oh, I thought we were just friends. They seem to be able to get away with that. But I would always say to the woman I was with, I was like, listen, can I tell you something? That guy wants to fuck you. Okay. I don't care how much you have in common and how you both like fucking uh, rosé or whatever the fuck it is. And he really listens to you when you talk he wants to fuck you um yeah so i don't know what you do there because you went on his facebook and you're snooping so that's one of the thing you know if you're gonna pull that aha moment you better be right because if you're not then they get to play the you know how dare you snoop you know how dare you fucking snoop on me it's just like i mean don't women have the out why are you snooping on me? Uh, because you have a dick, sir. That's why. I trust you. I don't trust your dick. All right. Missed opportunity. So I, I, I would bring it up. I don't know if you bring it up. I don't have enough information. That was a really quick and to the point, which I, I, I really appreciate. But um, watching some videos and stuff in the search field, I saw a list of a few girls' names. That's not good either. I don't fucking know, but I don't know who the girls are. But that there, right there, that that fucking uh, ex-colleague thing. I don't know. I don't know. Um, that seems like a blowjob in the future to me. That's what I would, if I was standing in front of a green screen, a little meteorologist, there'd be a fucking, you know, dick floating towards a woman with her mouth open. Down south. 
Hey, Nia, can you give me? Can you give a woman? Because women never write into this podcast because I'm such an asshole. Mm-hmm. Can you give some quick advice here? Mm-hmm. This woman went on Facebook. She's been with this guy for two years. She says they're happy. He does everything right. Everything's fine. But she checked his Facebook. Why? Because uh, you if guys... They're, if they're happy and everything is going okay. Why, why did you, you check Facebook? to see how much my check was for today? Bill! Huh? Oh, my God. I can't believe you're just putting me out on Front Street like that. Because you guys snoop. It's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyways, I was just curious. See, now you're gonna have everybody with the gold digging W H O R E comments. And that's not why you did it, it's because we did a job together and you wanted to see what I made job versus back east yeah, for job the back east for the We're family, the job back east for the family. Yeah, and you wanted to see how much I made versus what you made. Obviously, I know you're gonna make way more than I make. Okay, I was just happened to be there. I mean, they did request me, but that's a whole other story. <clears throat> anyway, boyfriend's Facebook, straight to the point. Did wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to the check there. Why? I watch I Because I like watching you twist on the f- awkwardness that I live in day to day. Um, so anyway, she goes to check uh, the Facebook messenger, and she said, I saw that he is writing on a weekly basis with an ex-colleague of his, a beautiful young lady. Uh, the thing is, is that they were close at work back then, but he quit three months ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. Keep going. That's it. And what? And I, and I just don't believe in male-female friendships. I'm talking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> bap, 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 bap. What do you say? What do you say? Uh, and what, what's the question? What are you doing? Go back. Also, the, when we're watching some videos and stuff on his phone, in the search, f- f- I saw a list of a few girls' names. Other than that, he's great to me. Uh, yeah, listen, this is why you don't go snooping in social media or in phones, because if you find something, because the thing is, if you are looking in that direction, you're looking for something. So any little thing, no matter how innocent, is going to get you all fucked up in the head. So if you're going to go looking for stuff, you're going to go find stuff. So either drop it or confess that you've been a little snoopy snoop and you're paranoid and you're insecure. But I think you should just zip it and move on and not look at his his social media or his phone anymore. Wow. I said she should actually ask him about that. That guy. But you're the lady. I would listen to the lady here. Well, I said either one. You got to like fess up and be like, listen, I've been feeling kind of insecure lately. And I went in your Facebook and I saw that you messenger somebody. And first of all, I apologize for invading your privacy because I wouldn't appreciate it if you did that to me. But second of all. But since I've done it. But, but who, who is this bitch? Who the F is this bitch? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Girlfriend, sociopathic Wait, mother. But you, but you know you're wrong for looking in this Facebook. And you know you're looking wrong for looking in this phone. You're wrong. You're wrong for that. So just know that. Hang on. Uh, all right, dear Bill, I need some advice. I'm 30 years old, and I've been seeing this lady um, for the past four months, and things have been getting uh, have gotten pretty serious. I'm already having dinner at her parents' house frequently. Oh, Jesus. Going to her family parties. Oh, Jesus. And spending the holidays together. Jesus Christ. I'm practically part of the family already. To use her father's words, and to be honest, I'm cool with it, um, I love this girl. She's great. All right. So what's the problem? Um, so so great. In fact, we decided to do New York New Year's in Palm Beach together at her cousin's place. Now he finally writes, "Oh Jesus!" All right. Now what's going to happen? See, I like some of these 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 letters. They set him up like a great movie. Like he set this up. Like this is perfect. This is like a Norman <laughs> Rockwell parent. Yeah. A parent, parent painting. Everything's going great. Now all of a sudden. He's going to New Year's in Palm Beach together at a cousin's place. What? Why? What could possibly go yes, wrong? Uh, this is this is very well written. <laughs> this guy gets a star. Um, anyway, so we go out the night before New Year's. There's a whole group of us, and I head off to take a piss. I come back and see my girl dancing and making out with some other guy oh, oh, who shit. wasn't a member of our group. Oh, well, who gives a shit? Even if he was a member of the group, it's another guy. I'm obviously flummoxed, this educated son of a bitch. I decided to interrupt their little makeout session on the dance floor. It would have continued unabated if I hadn't stepped in. So I pushed the guy aside 
Hand her back her purse. Yes, I was carrying her purse for her. Ouch. It fit into my back pocket in case you're wondering. I was wondering. <laughs> and I leave the bar. The bar is called the Cucina. Yeah, kitchen, right? Right? I think so. Yeah. I am a little Spanish right there. I am outside just uh, beside myself with anger, and she doesn't follow me out. I go back to her cousin's place and go to bed. Around 3 a.m., the texts come in. Nothing happened. I didn't do anything, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> she finally cops to it, and just in her defense, uh, she says, I'm just not used to having a boyfriend, and I don't think you know how drunk I was. So, Happy New Year's. This was in a text message? No, 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 no. Oh. No, uh, no when, she, when she showed up to him, she says oh, to him. She okay. finally just said, look, I'm just... She ba- yeah, fine. I fucked the guy. I'm just not used to having a boyfriend. Okay. Wow. And I don't think you realized how drunk I was. <laughs> wow. Yes. See? Um, and you can be that honest. You know what I mean? I could never be that honest with you because you could throw a vase at me. And then the cops would uh, arrest me for breaking the vase with my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he, go, uh, he goes, should I chalk this up to a dumb drunk mistake and patch things up? No. I've been ha- I, I'm having trouble being objective about this. This has really got me fucked up and hurting. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that was that was a ridiculous level of acting out. Yeah, you on, on not, her part. Not, that, that's 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 crazy. That is absolutely that is some crazy. Wacky stuff. That's wacky. That's a real, some real wacky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, he, he, she she made out with a guy right in front of you. He knows. What are you talking about? He knows. About? He knows what he's supposed to. He's fucking stunned. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. That's pretty stunning. We're we're in the goddamn trauma unit right now. And you're going, you stepped on a landmine. Yeah. Move I'm on, you, sweetheart. No. Move yeah. on. Move no, on. No, that is... Uh, Retain some dignity and, yes. uh, and walk away. You basically... Just imagine if you discovered that 17 years in, married with four kids... That half look like you and half look like this should have been stripper. All right? Um, you dodged a bullet. And, yeah, it's going to hurt. And that's really what that really is, dude, is uh, aside from your feelings, that's your fucking manhood being hurt right there. And you don't as, have as to guys, look at it objectively. You know, let me finish for oh. fuck's sakes. <laughs> as a guy, that, that shit's not supposed to happen, right? Because you're supposed to put it on them and they're supposed to be mesmerized by your dick. And the reality is, is that's not what it's like. Yeah. And when you discover that, that's, that's a tough day. Uh, yeah, but you, know? you don't have to look and at it And then you never trust those oh broads God. again. <laughs> you never trust them again. No. And that's the safest place you can be. No. Number three. <laughs> but don't look at it Shut objectively. It last Saturday. It was a shitty, horrible thing that happened, and you should be feeling all of those feelings, including anger. So, But just walk away. It's yeah, over. that's what he should do is just walk away. Although I would be tempted to pull a female move and get some revenge, and I would tell her dad, you know, what do you he, know what, what a what, slut you raised? Do you know what a <laughs> slut you're in love with? That's half your DNA. Did she get that from your fucking wife? No, 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 no. No, yeah, there's yeah, no do need that. to go. There's no need no, to No, no, because then, then he'll look like an it. asshole, and then she, he'll understand why she did it. I'm trying to inflict the most pain here. Ah, walk away. Yeah. I don't do revenge. All right, advice. Bill, since you've, uh, you've given great advice on relationships in the past, I'm wondering if you can do it for me. I've been with this girl, this lady of mine, for years, and we're planning on getting married. Oh, Jesus. Uh, We're both only 20 years old. I'm a college dropout since I'm certainly a more blue-collar individual. She is going to college to work with children. We both work full-time jobs, mine being the night shift in a warehouse selecting orders to go to individual stores, stressful and physically challenging. Uh, Here's being... Hers being a phone answering day job from eight to five, working with customers in a graphic design shop, boring and easy. Okay, he's defined his job is stressful and physically challenging, and her job is boring and easy. Never underestimate how tedious a boring job can be. I'd rather do your job, walking around breaking balls. Look at his fucking shirt, dude. Fucking queer. Drive by on the fucking forklift, right? Guys start a softball league, you have a great time. Rather than sitting there having your ass fall asleep in a cubicle, listening to people bitch because they can't figure out how to work there, set it and forget it. Grass is always greener, my friend. Why don't I shut my fucking pie hole and read the rest of this? All right. Since we started dating, she seemed to do everything to keep me interested. 
uh, make me breakfast in the mornings on some on some days. Go to concerts with me when she didn't necessarily like the music. Um, the whole works. But I've noticed that she without she's without question just been lacking in the care department. She just sits and watches TV every night and eats and complains about gaining weight. I come home in the morning to do dirty dishes to do the dirty dishes that piled up in the sink from her having friends over while I'm at work for the night and get yelled at for not cleaning them when I saw them sitting there, but I had no part in making them dirty. Dude, what the fuck? You can't have that. She leaves clothes laying around every room in the house, and that's not even how uh, she is with me. She has seemed to develop some kind of self-righteousness where everything that she... where everything that she... Yeah, dude, you, I, I really got to proofread these people. So many spelling mita- mistakes. She has seemed to develop some kind of self-righteousness where everything that she s- says throughout the day should be my main concern and I should go out of my way to make her life easier. I do her college homework. I take care of the $2,000 dog I bought for her. I work on her car when, when she nearly runs the damn wheels off the thing and I do chores for her family she volunteers me for. Dude, she has your balls in a little that you know that little engagement ring you bought her. If you bought there, yet your balls are in there too. The next part is the icing on the cake. She goes as far as to dictate what time I have to go to bed and wake up in the morning. Um, e- uh, evening since I work at nights. Uh, what what I can and can't spend money on, who I can hang out with, what days I can see friends and require me to call her every time I arrive at work and text her in the middle of the night when I get off work and request her, and I request her to do nothing outside of what she does on her day-to-day routine. To sum all that up, I feel like she's forcing me into a cookie mold guy when I actually let her make her own decisions like some strange thing called an adult. All right, I'm going to stop right here, dude, because this is just going to be more fucking misery. All right. This is this is what I, I've said this before on the podcast. You have to – I don't give a fuck how good the woman is that you're with. You really have to be careful because all this shit you see on TV where women are just constantly – there's all this fucking information out there about how guys are assholes to women. There's just reams of it, and there needs to be because guys are assholes to women. So women, I think, are more aware – or at least they should be more aware because they got all these fucking goddamn shows with either from one to four twats sitting around bitching about guys and all the shit that we do. But there's no show on TV where you have four guys just sitting around a coffee table, you know, drinking some hot cocoa with some pillows and wearing sweaters and their favorite shoes, talking about, you know, not losing yourself in a relationship. That's what you've done here. All this shit that she's doing is your fault. Okay, and what's great about being a guy is you can blame the victim, which is why we're better problem solvers, all right? This is your fault. This is all on you. You don't like any of this shit. You have to sit down and talk to her, okay? You, you, you're not required to call her. You can go to bed when you fucking want to go to bed, and you can just sit there and tell her, you did those dishes, you clean it up, okay? Now, here's the point. This is the key with broads. This is what you got to do. You can't be mean. There's no reason to be mean here. There's no reason to yell. There's no reason to be angry. Okay? All three of those things is what she wants you to do. Because the, cause she know, she's going to know she's fucking wrong. If you, if, you, if you made the dishes dirty and every day you're telling me to clean them up, you treat me like I'm fucking Alice on the goddamn Brady Bunch. Everybody knows that that's fucking wrong. So what women do when they're fucking wrong is they try to make the argument about something else. All right? So she's going to do that anyways. So, But you're going to make it easy if you're angry and you yell at her and you call her fucking names. So what you got to do is you got to keep keep your fucking cool. That's what you got to do. Keep your fucking cool and say, listen, I worked all night. I don't think it's fair that you tell me to come home and I have to do these dishes when you made these dishes dirty yourself. I don't think it's fair to me to come home in the morning and have a sink full of dirty dishes that not only you, you and your friends made dirty. That's unacceptable to me that you want me to wash those. That's unacceptable. I'm not doing it. You have to wash those. 
I'll wash my dirty dishes. I'm not doing that. All right? And then, then let her flip out. Let her pout. Let her slam the fucking cabinets. Let her not fuck you. Just don't back down. Rub one out. Who gives a fuck? It's just an urge. You've already banged her. You're not missing anything. Who gives a fuck? But don't get angry. All right? And then just do, do to her what she did to you. Just, just reclaim that territory. You're not doing that. You're not doing that anymore. All right? Start with the fucking dishes. And then start with this. I not, and, you know, you can actually tag that argument. And just say, now that we're on this topic of discussing things, I'm going to go to bed when I want to go to bed. I just, it makes me feel like a child when you're telling me when to go to bed. I know when to go to bed. All right, now that I've aired two complaints, how about you give me a couple of, you got anything you want to say to me? And just stay cool. Then when she hits you with some shit, if you don't like it, tell her, you know, I was going to say to go fuck herself, to, you know, I don't know what, whatever. You know what, fuck that last advice. Just go with the dishes thing first. It's unacceptable. That's it. If you bring up something else, then, you, then it looks like you have all this resentful shit, and then she'll try and spin it like, well, if you're feeling all this, why didn't you fucking say anything? Because you're a cunt. That's what's going to happen, and then you're going to lose the argument, and then next thing you know, to make up for it, you're not going to be getting any pussy from her, and you're going to be doing a whole sink full of fucking dishes that you didn't dirty. All right, moving on. But, sir, you have all the power there. Just keep your fucking cool. Dear Bill, first I want to say, uh, um, I have all the episodes of Uninformed you did with the Teen Idol Sensation on my phone and listen to them every day. But on to my dilemma. I'm 18 and work at the finish line at the mall, and my boss is a complete dick. Of course he is, because he's managing a finish line at the mall. You're 18. You got your whole life ahead of you. He probably married the wrong person. He's starting to go bald. He's standing there wearing that referee uniform going, hey, what did I tell you about the Chuck Taylors? You know, I thought I told you to stalk them up in the back. Whatever the hell they say. Do they make you wear whistles there? Or is that athlete's foot? Or is that the foot locker? I don't know. Actually, you know something? I have like the the worst collection of dirty white boy sneakers you're ever going to see in your life. Every time I look at my sneaker collection, I picture, you know, Keith Robinson... Or Patrice, if he was still alive. God damn it. Um, just trashing me. You know what's funny about how much I miss Patrice is the amount of times is when I, I, I miss that guy. How the fuck do I tell the story without fucking outing somebody? Somebody told, gave a fucking speech, you know, or whatever. Went on some rant about the state of comedy and everybody thought it was fucking amazing. It was just one of those times where I wish Patrice was in the room when this person was fuck it was pro- you know, was was talking about it. That's when I missed that dude the fucking most. I missed him then. I missed him when um Penn State, that Sandusky guy, when he did when he gave the fucking interview. You know that interview when he, he, I think he was talking to Bob Costas and they were going, do you, uh, do you like little boys? And he was like, do I like little boys? I mean, I enjoy their company and, you know, somebody says, do you like little boys? There's one fucking answer. No, no, I don't. Okay. And fuck you for asking me that. And this guy's sitting there like, you know, like trying to work out the math in his head. And as I, as creepy as it was to watch that, when I watched it, I was actually laughing, thinking of Patrice watching it, laughing hysterically, and how he would somehow get 25 minutes of material just out of that guy trying to figure out how to answer that, that question. And I swear to God, like, I don't know. We got this benefit coming up. For him, and as just putting the thing together, it's just like going through him dying all over again. It's been fucking brutal, but good and a good positive things because everybody bought up the tickets. But it's just been like this fucking ah, uh, the finality of it. It's just something like I'll like I even talk to all my buddies like we bring him up like he's still around, and we'll talk about him like he's still around for five minutes before you just start looking at the ground. It's just fucking awful. I really, I really do not wish that. You know, I don't know why you would, but and it's not even worth even stating, but I really don't wish this on fucking anybody because it's really just something when I'm 80 
Well, if I'm lucky enough, you know, the way I've been drinking lately. Let's just be a little more conservative. I'm 68. <laughs> it's just something that's still just going to be. I've just I'm coming to an acceptance that it's going to be as sad when I'm that age as it is right now. You know, so I figured I'd talk about that to add to the already not hilarious podcast that I'm doing this week. I'd add to the uh, losing a close friend fucking vibe. You know, who's getting who? It really wasn't a funny fucking week out in the world. Uh, all right, douche boss. Where are we here? Um, at the finish line, he is one of those guys who, okay, his boss is a complete dick. All right, and he says, uh, He's one of those guys who got bullied all through high school and now actually has some control and takes it out on me and uh, and the other employees. How did you figure that out? Is that you just like psychologically breaking the guy down? Do I have to tell you something? There's nothing worse than watching somebody uh, abuse their position of power, however however small it is. You know, like this guy right here has no right getting mad at like an athlete who goes around being a dick because it's like, dude, you're doing the exact same thing. You just can't run a 440. But your your head space is the exact same place as some, you know, egomaniac fucking athlete. You just you just suck at sports. So you sell the gear <laughs> to two people to, to go play sports. Anyways, he says he even steals out of the register at work. And holds the special release shoes for him and his friends. He's 30 years old and tries to fuck the 16s and 17-year-olds who work there. Oh, my God. This guy is a character right out of the movies. You know, I, I worked with a guy like this. I used to work in a restaurant a long time ago. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm trying to get the check cereal out of my throat. Um, I used to work with this this guy and basically, like, Four or five of these guys bought into a restaurant. And the, and the one guy who's going to be there every day, who's always the guy who ends up stealing. The silent partners always get fucked. His his, his buy-in was he had all the, the equipment for the kitchen. So he, he – he, I don't know. He had some other failed restaurant. He got all the equipment. and uh, But anyways, this guy was a cokehead. He used to steal out of the register. He used to fucking uh, – Try to bang the, uh, not the maitre d', the fucking uh, maitre d's, whatever. The fucking chick who sits you down, the hot one. You know, who dresses classy. That skirt fucking going right over her shapely ass. Yeah, he used to try to fucking bang them all the goddamn time. And when they wouldn't give it up, they'd get fired and then he'd be bringing a new one. And if that one ended up banging him, then she stuck around. It was brutal. So anyways, he goes, uh, he harasses me and others calling our phones repeatedly telling us to come in on our days off and leave voicemails saying we are ignoring him. Jesus Christ, it's my fucking day off. Anyways, he goes, recently he got the only cool management manager fired because he said he was stealing. I don't really need this job but would like to keep working here but don't know how much longer I can take this. Any advice on what I should do would be appreciated. Uh, sorry for it being so long. Go fuck yourself. Uh, it wasn't long at all. It just sounded long the way I read. Um, well, if you don't need the job, then I would I would quit. But what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't leave on bad terms. I don't know. Is it really going to matter? It's not like when you're 30, if you're looking for a new job, you're going to put on your resume. I worked at the finish line. Because at that point, you're going to be into a career. I don't know. You say, I don't really need this job, but would like to keep working here, but don't know. How... Oh, see, so, so basically you're saying you like having walk around money. Well, f I would just get another job. Just get another job. Start the process of getting the fuck out of there. Like Nothing you're going to say to that guy is going to change that guy. And all that guy can do is kind of make your life difficult if you're trying to get another job uh, at this point in your life. Just know that like. He's at the tip of the iceberg of the awful life that he's going to be living. Um, like the, just what the, the way he's setting the table, you don't need to do anything to him because he's going to do it to himself. And it would really be bad if if this guy was just such a negative force that you somehow got sucked into it. I know you probably fantasize about punching him in the face or telling the guy to go fuck himself. And then the girl that you have the crush on at the finish line walks out arm in arm with you guys and you start your own sneaker store right across and you watch him get fired 
I know you've probably played that fantasy out in your head a hundred times, but uh, I would just get another job. Sound like you don't mind working. You're not afraid of working. You like having the money, but you just can't deal with this douche. So this is a great life lesson. You do not need to be surrounded by douches. You have the power. It's your fucking life. Just He's always going to be a douche. Just walk out of his life. Just be like, yeah, you know, I don't need to be around this guy. You know? And then one day when you run into him, after you get another job, hey, how come you uh, left? And just be like, you know, because uh, I don't know, dude. You would just And don't curse at him or anything because then it, it gives him an excuse to not see himself and just be like, I don't know, man, you, the, you just kind of creep me out the way you were always hitting on girls who were like 16 and 17 years old. I mean, if that's what you want to do, I mean, you know, that's, that's cool. But, uh, you know, I'm just kind of not into that. So, uh, you have yourself a nice evening. And you just walk away from them. Maybe it'll work out like that. I have no idea, but, uh, I try and get yourself another job. All right. There you go. That's my advice. All right. Here's another next one. Okay, let's get into the questions for the week here. Um, all right, Freshbox. Okay, wait, wait, let me see here. Okay, Bill, great emails for the week. Uh, Freshbox23 got a lot of responses. Your request for advice for the 23-year-old virgin in London with strict parents. Uh, I only included responses from chicks because... That's who you asked uh, to get emails in from. Uh, but it should be noted about 50 guys wrote in with their advice. Responses are from around the world with different advice. Yeah, I figured, you know, women would know better. So anyways, there's this woman. She's 23. She's working on her goddamn doctorate or something crazy like that. And she wants to know. She's a virgin. She wants to know how to get out there and uh, meet a nice fella instead of uh, some guy on Tinder, I believe, is, is the bad dating site. If That's a reference I hear younger comics using. All right, fresh. Okay, so here we go. Here's some women helping out. Fresh box twenty three. Uh, all right, clam podcast listener. All right, uh, hey there, Bilbo Baggins. I'm a fellow clam podcast listener, responding to the twenty three year old lady who wrote on your uh, Monday morning podcast. Uh, don't go on them. Don't go on them dating apps. Most of them just want to bang or they are closet gay men or they are serial killers who still live with their moms. I also did not date until my mid-20s for the same reason and I found that the most effective way to meet guys was to get a bunch of single girlfriends and go speed dating. You get to meet these men in the flesh and see them sweating in their shirts, awkwardly palming their sweaty drinks. Where do you go speed dating? Uh, it's funny and endearing, and you'll have a better chance getting matched to a human being. The fact that they were nervous, I would think that they're, there's something about them that they're a better guy, you know? I can't say a better guy, but then you don't want to be all nervous when they're going out in the job world. It's a difficult, difficult thing, trying to pick the right person. Anyways, other options are to join a church group that does charity work or meet a... That's a good day. You meet somebody... Or a, a fellow studious working professional at school, but don't bang anyone at work. That's how I now. That's how I met my now soon-to-be ex-husband. Oh my God! So you just gave all of this great advice, and then you have a failed relationship at the end. What is she supposed to do? I think there was some good things there. Join a church group that does charity work. Maybe not through the church if you're not into that shit. Do some charity work, but then uh, just make sure you 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 vet. Because that's also where I would think a psycho might go to try to get some, you know, you know, some open minded slash a little naive when it comes to street smarts. Always have your guard up. Uh, oh, did I mention I saw that movie Eighth Grade? Did I tell you that? And I didn't I didn't I went to go see it. I didn't even know Bo Burnham directed it. I just heard it was good. And God damn it. I wanted to see a movie and I went to go see it. And it's it's fucking great. It's great. There's one scene in there that is excruciating to watch, but I think it's important that, uh, you know, like preteen, teen girls see it. Because uh, it's really a, a, I don't know, it's fucking brutal. There's a lot of creeps out there, all right? But it, it doesn't get, you know, it gets creepy enough, but not to the point where you're like, I wish I never saw this fucking movie. Um, 
but it's uh you know the way it was handled i thought was 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 perfect and uh it's great to see a fucking comedian out there directing a movie that good huh everybody thinks all we could do is jump around talking about our dicks look at that look at bo burnham crushing it um so go check that out support a fellow comedian and support cinema live cinema uh all right fresh box 23 hey billy bobble dick <laughs> that's a great one i friggin' love your podcast you're truly the inner monologue in my head for almost every scenario in my life i find myself in i'm a 29 year old from dorchester dot av dude dorchester mass and am a biology student in a committed relationship my advice to this broad from England looking for love, dating apps are what I would describe as a last resort. And I believe that's something that I suggested to her. Maybe I'm just old school, but the reality is most people on dating apps are most people in real life these days. Uh, what you see on Bumble is what you see in real life. There's not really one app that's better than the other. They all house most of the douchebaggery in the world so what's the difference? Meet people platonically is what I would suggest. Who wants a baby daddy from Tinder? All right, well, how does she do this? But hey, who am I to judge? Get some girlfriends, then they introduce you to single friends at a fucking barbecue or some shit like that. I do know some girlfriends who have met their husbands off dating sites. But hey, come to think of it, their husbands seriously suck. Seriously suck. Just so many dicks on so many levels. All right. So I think dating apps is out. That's what I've learned so far. Keep on keeping on. I can't wait to see you at the garden. Oh, wait, wait, that's it? So what was your advice? Okay, basically, stay away from the dating apps. It seems like you, you get with a group of girlfriends. You go out in a herd as the guys are in the tall grass peeking up, waiting to find a weak one. And I guess somehow you, I don't know. Anyways. Um, wait, let me just read the rest of this. Keep on keeping on. I can't wait to see you at the garden in October, Bill, you redheaded stepchild. And hey, England broad, it's, it'll get easier. Just stick your tits out there. And it, it's like flies to honey. You'll quickly realize how easy it is. Um, all right. There's a lot of advice in a lot of different directions in there. But, you know, she's studying biology and she's from Dorchester. So she's getting a lot of mixed signals here. All right. Fresh Brox 23 from a lady. Dear Billy Big Tits, I just finished listening to your podcast from August 6th. And I have a few suggestions for the girl who's late to the dating game. I'm only 21, but I'm certainly not fresh out of the box. And I know a few things. Number one. Use Bumble, not Tinder. Okay, now she's saying she's saying uh, dating app. On Bumble, the girls have to message first so you can do some flirting. Oh, so you can do... Oh, not flirt, flirting. You can do some filtering out of dudes who seem creepy without feeling pressured to respond to a message. Tinder is good if you want to get laid. If you're trying to weed out the guys who just want to get their dicks wet, tell them you're saving yourself until marriage. You can always change your mind later. Uh, quote. Oh, so you just tell them you're saving yourself till marriage, and that just makes a bunch of – most of the guys will just who are just looking to get laid, I guess, will leave you alone. Anyways, number two, my friends love to pit me out. I'm sure if you ask yours, they would too. Three, like Bill said, find an activity. Lots of cities have sports leagues. That could, that could be a good place to, spar to start. Thanks and go fuck yourself. I really think out of all the advice that I just read there – I would say stay away from all dating apps and I, you need to get a hobby. You need to carve out some time, some social time and like, you know, some sort of sport, charity work, um, a cooking class. Just get yourself out there where it's like those are really good. I, I feel like there's a lot of uh, decent people in those things. Sports, you know, you can find the controlling type a dick but you know that guy else is going to crush it a lot of times in the real world so depends on if you want an in-ground pool or not i don't know what you're looking for um but there you go there's some advice for you good luck and don't settle all right don't settle if a guy's being a dick fuck him there's there's you know there, there's going to be a good guy out there for you you, know, you don't ever have to fucking settle send it back this food's too cold um girlfriend of seven years dumped me 
Um, hey, Bill, my girlfriend of seven years dumped me two months after she moved to Connecticut for graduate school. She didn't use those exact words, but she told me she, she told me she needed time to think because something is missing in our relationship and she needs time to figure out what it is. Well, dude, you've been with her for fucking seven years, man. I mean, who am I to talk? I was with Nia for nine years before we got married, but um, we were on the same page as we were both terrified to fucking make that leap. Um, anyways, I'm not a mind reader, but if some, someone has been with you for seven years and they need to the time to think about whether they still want to be with you, that's not a good sign. Yes, your instincts are correct, I would say. Uh, since I had this conversation with her, I have been absolutely devastated and depressed. I'm ashamed to admit this, but the other night I found myself on my bedroom floor crying in the fetal position. Well, that's totally normal. And it's also it's a healthy thing to do. Cry it out of you. Don't drink it out of you or fucking jump off a balcony. Those are dumb shit that men do. All right? Women get down on the floor, cry in the fetal position. I think that's why they live longer. If it was socially acceptable for us to do it. So please continue doing that. It's a valid human emotion that both men and women have that men fight. Yeah, fucking cry it out of you. Um, Good for you. Very mature thing to do. Um, You should not feel ashamed at all. He said, I understand that time heals all wounds, but I have no idea how to how to start the process of getting over this. Do what you're doing. Cry it out of you and then um, call your best friend and just say, listen, dude, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'm fucking devastated. I'm over here crying like a little girl. I got to get me out of the house, man. Take me for a fucking walk like a dog. Just (laughs) can I get some fresh air? Anyways, he said to keep my mind off her. I try to stay busy by going to the gym and focusing on hobbies, but I can't seem to shake this miserable feeling. How would you handle this situation if you were in my shoes? Um, I would accept the fact that that it's going to hurt, okay, and that you're not going to be able to just go to the gym and take a pottery class and forget a woman that you loved for seven years. Um, What you have to do is understand that it's going to hurt for a while, and you have to, rather than run from the pain... Sit in it, cry your way through it, and then go to the fucking gym. And, you know, the crying thing's going to last for a little while. And once you get through that, then just try, you know, even during the crying time, I try to do, I'm going to do something positive today. I'm going to do the dishes, you know, just do little things that are on a list, you know. And then while you're doing that, just start making a list of uh, how you want to come out of this. Do you want to come out of this ship? This shit. (laughs) Yeah, literally this shit. 20 pounds heavier? Or do you want to come out like 10 pounds lighter? Because you've been going to the gym. You know? Do you want to come out of this hating women? Or hopeful that that you're with the wrong person? And you you have a whole new opportunity to meet somebody great. You know? You didn't have any kids. You weren't married. It's a fucking nice, clean breakup. Um, You know? You can totally rebuild your fucking life where you can have the greatest fucking life ever. And then one day you're going to run into her. She's going to see how fucking happy you are. And it's the fucking moment that you're going to want to be like, yeah, huh? you see that? I'm happy. Look at me and my car and my family. And you know what? If you're truly happy, you're not going to have that, hey, fuck you thing to her. You're going to be like, hey, how are you? I hope you're happy. You know? And in your head, the greatest thing that ever happened is you fucking left me. Because now, you dude, you're older, you're wiser, you're going through this fucking thing. Now you're going to really figure out what you like. I'm telling you, this will end up being the greatest thing that happened to you. But the thing is, you, gotta, you can't be a guy here and try to fucking block out the pain. You got to fucking just sit in it, you know, just fucking go through all of your shit that you bought together that makes you cry and all that shit. Cry, put it on Craigslist, get it the fuck out of there, you know. Get through all of that and then maybe just get rid of the shit that she got you. Move to a new fucking place. Just fucking start over. And then when you meet broads in a fucking bar, you just tell them what's going on with you. Just got out of this seven year thing. It was fucking devastating. But I'm totally hopeful. You know, I want to meet somebody great. And they're always like, oh, my God, that's nice. They're attracted to it. Next thing you know, you're drinking IPAs. You're getting fucking blowjobs with women you're not in a relationship with. Look at that. The clouds are parting. All right. All of that shit is in your future, but you got to go through the fucking pain first. All right. 
That's it. If you were a car, you're a fucking barn find right now. They haven't even fucking sp- fucking sprayed you off and got the rat shit out of you. You just got to deal with that right now. But the best thing you could do is not bury this shit. The reason why women do so well is because they're allowed to cry. They can cry in front of their fucking friends. They can talk the shit out and they can get past it. We don't. We fucking carry it and carry it and carry it and it affects other relationships. If you truly want to fucking get past this thing, you got to go through the pain of it. That's what the fuck I that's what I learned all the fucking times I got dumped. All right? Good luck to you, sir. Girl quit job. Lady This lady quit her job and traveled the world. Um, All right, here we go. My girl quit. Wait, my girl comes home. Why did I feel like there was something else in here? Did I miss one of these things? Maybe not. All right. My girl comes home early the other day and tells me she quit her job. I work full time in a metal shop. Jesus Christ, what are you, a blacksmith? And I go to school full-time for engineering. Uh, we also have two beautiful kids. We cannot afford our houses, our house, cars, etc. without her working. And she acts like I'm a bad guy when I say, when I get on her about it. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what I should do. I'm thinking of leaving her because this is not the first time she's done this. And in the total seven years we've been together, she's worked about two and a half, ye- two and a half years of around ten jobs. Wait, she has worked about two and a half years of around 10 jobs? You mean, and I'm guessing you're saying she's had 10 jobs and collectively worked two and a half years. Can't take the financial stress anymore. What's your advice? Um, uh, first thing I would do, I'd downsize your life. Just be like, all right, well, look, if you're not going to work, then we got, we got to do something here. Um, that's incredibly selfish and... Um, Look, she obviously doesn't want to work. She wants to be at home. She wants to be with the kids. So you need to make enough money to basically, you know, treat her like a third kid. Um, so your lifestyle is going to have to go down then. If that's what she, I would just sit down and be like, can I ask you a question? Do you want to just stay home and be with the kids? You know, and let her fucking flip out and scream and yell and all that. And just don't lose your cool. Just say to her, is that what you want? Okay? Because I need to know that. Okay? So I don't keep thinking that that we're going to be dual income and making financial decisions that way. I can already tell you right now, dude, that the fact that you're working full time and she's working full time. And if the second she fucking quits... You're fucked. You guys are living beyond your lifestyle, beyond your means. You shouldn't be living like that. So you're basically, the two of you guys are spending all the money that you're making. That's, that's no way to live. All right? You need to be, you need, you need to downsize your life is basically it. I would drive, uh, you know, use Toyota or a Honda. Those fucking things never die. I'd get one of those. I downsize and then, you know, I mean, I don't think you just quit on a relationship and walk out on two kids, but the stress has to be fucking brutal. And if she's being a fucking baby about it, um, you know, that's, uh, you know, this is one of these fucking things that, you know, be a nice change on one of those chick shows, you know, or four broads sit around fucking talking about women's stuff. They never talk about this type of shit because this, this would probably be considered sexist if you brought it up. That's a hell of a fucking thing for her to be doing to you. Um, I would just, you just got to lay it on the line. Just sit her down and just say, listen, is this what you want to do? Um, I need to know that because I'm not going through this again. All right. And I would just say you've had 10 jobs in the last seven years and you've worked collectively collectively about two and a half of those seven years. Okay, when you quit a job like that, just quit a job and have no other job. It puts unbelievable stress on me and it's not fair to me. Okay, so I need to know, do you not want to work? Do you just want to stay home with the kids? Because if you do. We're going to have to downsize our lives dramatically. If you want to keep living like this, you need to get a job. All right? 
And if she flips out about that type of thing, um, I mean, that's a tough one. I, I guess I would be like, when she flipped out, be like, all right, you know something? Scream and yell and get it out of your system. But you have 48 hours to sit down with me and discuss this like an adult and cut a plan. Okay? Or I need to make a decision. Because I'm not going to I'm not going to live my life with this level of financial stress. Um, something along those lines, because I tell you, dude, what she's doing to you is unbelievably immature and fucking selfish. When you need dual income and you got two kids at home, you just don't quit a fucking job. All right. Jesus fucking Christ, what if you did that? You know what I mean? I'm telling you. This right here, when that fucking guy was sitting there talking, that guy saying like, oh, you should fucking leave your job and go travel around the fucking planet. This is why you don't do that. What you're doing, sir, busting your ass, trying to get ahead, that's what you do when you're fucking young. Okay? It makes your life a hell of a lot fucking easier as you get older. Okay? Because the older you fucking get, you got to be somewhere. You know what I mean? Like they, all, they want to hire young people, generally fucking speaking. You have to be at a certain place by a certain fucking age, generally speaking, or they're not going to give you a shot. Okay? It's like that old fucking thing about the fucking, what was it? What was it? Those two animals. One of them was storing away food. The other one was running around like a fucking jerk off. And then the storm finally hits and the ants fucking eating. And then the, the turtles uh, beat the hare. However the fucking story goes. Um I got to tell you this, you know, I sacrificed a lot to get where I'm at and I missed out on a lot of shit, but the shit that I, on the back end that I ended up getting to do, okay, you know, there was a whole bunch of stuff that I missed socially, just fun stuff, so-called regular shit that I missed because, and I slept on a futon, like I've told you a zillion times till I was about 36, 37 years old, all right, but the outside of that was I got to perform at Madison Square Garden. I got to fucking play drums with Slash and Duff and Guns N' Roses. You know what I mean? That's fucking insane. But you got to be willing to stay on the fucking futon till you're, you're, you're pushing 40. <laughs> and laying there in the loneliness of that with the fucking voices creeping in your head of doubt. And you have to beat those things down as they're telling you. Did I, did I make a horrible fucking mistake? Um, so what you're doing, sir, you're working full-time and you're going to school full-time for engineering, okay? If your fucking wife, no offense, could just fucking ride it out for a couple of fucking years, all right, until you get your engineering degree, you get on your fucking feet. This is what old school couples used to do. Okay? They worked more as a fucking team. Because generally speaking, divorce was looked down upon. And they always try to make it look like, and there was all these women getting beaten and they just stayed in there. Like every fucking woman was getting the shit slapped out of her. All right? I'm not saying there wasn't women getting fucking, you know, the shit kicked out of them. All right? But there's a lot of fucking people to just throw in the fucking towel. Because it's hard. And then you're going to get with somebody else and what, it's going to be fucking easy? It, it is hard. But this is, this is like some shit. You need to iron this out. And she needs to get her fucking head screwed on straight and realize that she's got to fucking support you by keeping up her end of the bullshit while you become an engineer. And then you move up the fucking ladder. And at some point, she's going to get what I think she wants, which is what she's going to get to stay home alone. Um. Nia, can, can you come over and just help me finish off this podcast? I know you don't want to. Your shoulders literally just slumped. I'll read this really quickly. I know you're tired. Nia, we're all tired. Are you going to sit there like I'm going to scold you like a little kid? No, I'm just tired. What is, what is I know, it's 1.15 in the morning. All right, this, this guy, uh, his girl comes home. It's not even your wife? No, but you got two kids. Girl comes home early the other day, and she tells me she quit her job. I work full-time in a metal shop, and I'm going to engineering school. 
Uh, I'm going to school full-time for en- engineering. We also have two beautiful kids. We cannot afford our houses and our cars, et cetera, without her working, and she acts like I'm a bad guy when I say, when I get on her about it. I don't know why I should do. I'm thinking of leaving her because this is not the first time she's done this. In the total seven years we've been together, she's worked about two and a half of those years and had about 10 different jobs. I can't take the financial stress anymore. What's your advice, Nia Renee Hill? Yeah, I mean, I think you should definitely talk to her about it. And if you feel like she's not pulling her weight in your situation, then that's a problem. So, yeah, it's stressful. If he's carrying the burden, they have like two kids and whatever. I mean, is she just lying around the house all day? I mean, is she at least, you know, taking care of the kids and make sure they have lunches and all that stuff? Or is it just all falling on him? You know, that's really. Yeah, well, they need the money. Yeah. All right, so so I'm all right. So I'm okay. So I okay. Yeah, they both. If that's what their financial situation is, where they both need to be working, then they both need to be working. But I don't know how leaving her is going to alleviate the financial strain. But no, he's got kids. He's fucked, and then she's gonna bleed him dry because she'll be pissed. I think. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, she needs to get it together. <laughs> I'm, <going to> bed. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nia. All right. As I'm not gonna be all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. All right. Sorry. Well, I should have known better. When I asked her, she showed us Louis slump. She just literally came out of the bedroom to grab something. And she's going back to going to sleep. I'm like, oh, you want to answer a fucking podcast question? You see the instincts I have, people? All right. Listen, F is for Family comes out this Friday, December 18th, for the love of God. Please sit down and binge watch it. I know all you Star Wars fans want to go see that fucking movie. When you're done seeing that movie, can you please watch my show? I really appreciate it. Uh, all right. That's the podcast for Monday. Go fuck yourselves. Don't take any shit. And I'll, talk, I'll check it out yeah, on Thursday. All right. Here's an email from a lady, which I love. I, we don't get to hear from the ladies. Uh, sometimes on Friday nights, I like to watch scary movies w- with my husband and kids. My husband always gets pissed off halfway through the movie about me being a horrible parent and ushers the children out of the room. These are thriller movies, not gore or extreme violence. Our boys are 7 and 11. They are well-adjusted, good boys. They are on the honor roll at school. We are involved parents and eat a family dinner together every night. All right, well, it looks like you're crushing it so far. We are not parents that expose them to everything and anything, but my issue is... My husband lets them play Fortnite, Call of Duty, listen to Eminem, and all alternative rock music. Geek, they can't watch a thriller at that point? They even hear your podcast. I'm sick of being told I'm a bad parent. Well, first of all, if you're going to try to get your partner to hear what you're saying and how you feel, you can't say that they're a bad parent. Um, Who the fuck's going to be listening after that? You're going to get offended, and you're going to get defensive, and then that's going to be the end of any sort of uh, logical conversation, right? Anyways, I want to ex- he said, because I want to expose them to scary movies on occasion. It's something my sister and I always did growing up with my dad, and we were not messed up from it. My husband says that because I work with children as a school administrator, I should know not to expose their minds to this because it will fuck them up. And they're playing, f- I don't even know what Fortnite is, but I imagine that's one of those gun games. And they're listening to M&M's in, th- in this fucking podcast. Um, I wouldn't let my kid listen to this podcast. Uh, my husband says, blah, 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 blah. he will persevere on this topic until I want to punch him in the face. Instead, he ruins the movie and the kids leave the room and I go to bed. What are your thoughts on this? Am I a horrible mom? Keep in mind, if there's a sex scene, it's fast-forwarded. Thank you. Um, He's a hypocrite. It's like he can expose him to fucked up shit because he's into that stuff. Fortnite, Call of Duty, listening to Eminem. I don't know what alt-rock has to do with anything, but... Uh, no, I think they'll be all right. You know, when I used to watch those fucking movies, I was fine. Um, like, I understand him not wanting them to watch those movies. I get that. But not if you're also letting them do the other stuff. 
So what I would try to do is just sit down and say, listen, I want to talk to you about this because we keep fighting about these movies. Um, and this is a question. I don't want you to get upset. I'm just asking because I want to find a solution and not have a fight here. Um, why do you feel that thrillers movies are bad for them to watch, but it's not bad for them to play violent video games or listen to Eminem or the Monday morning podcast. And if he huffs and puffs and gets mad then, then he's, he's a fucking baby. And what you have to do then is keep your cool. And as he flips out, don't flip out. You have to remain calm. And just sit there and be like, you know, you got to be like Ben Kingsley in Sexy Beast. Like, why are you swearing? I'm not swearing. You stay in that fucking thing. Like, why are you raising your voice? I'm not raising your voice. I'm trying to find a solution here. And you're, you know, you're name calling and you're doing all of this stuff. Like, this isn't acceptable. Maybe, you know, when you calm down and you want to talk about this, all right, I am more than willing, if you can give me a logical reason, I'm more than willing to stop doing this. But if you can't give me a logical reason... I'm going to continue the tradition of watching the movies like I did with my dad, with my kids, and you're not going to come in and ruin them and tell me that I'm a horrible parent. Yeah, you know what? You need to put your foot down, sweetheart. Okay? Yeah, like that, I mean, as far, from where I'm sitting, that guy doesn't have a fucking leg to stand on. I would, I would think that sitting there watching some stupid thriller movie is not as bad as fucking playing a video game where you're shooting people. Because I remember I used to play video games, right? And they were just taking up too much of my time. So I, I literally unplugged the fucking thing and stuck it in the back of the closet. And I unplugged all the wires because I knew I would never be able to figure it back out, you know, how to do it. And I didn't keep the instruction booklet. And I never watched them again, right? Never played them again. But, like, I used to play this sniper game. And when you press down on this one button... It would have that, you know, the Sniper X, and it would, like, focus in on somebody's head. And I played that game so much over the course of a week, I walked out into the streets of New York, and I was looking at people, and I was seeing that sniper thing on their fucking head. Now, I'm not a lunatic, so I didn't do anything, but I was just like, what the fuck is that? Like, I don't, I never watched a thriller movie, you know, and then walked outside and thought about, you know, stabbing somebody or shooting somebody. You know why? Because I think the fucking movie, it's, you're not as connected to it. And it's over in like 90 minutes where like you can spend a day playing a video game. Just disappear down a rabbit hole. Um, yeah. All right. Well, you know, I mean, granted, all I heard was your side of the story. But um, for what I'm hearing, I 100% think you're in the right. So good luck with that. Put your foot down. But I'm telling you, don't. It seems like your husband is an emotional person. So when you get with somebody like that, you, 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 it's up to you to drive the ship of emotion. You have to stay fucking calm. And if they're flipping out and you're not flipping out, then they just look like an idiot. Um, I don't know. That's basically it. All right, plowing ahead here. Last one. Found out my sister had a, has different dad. Need advice. Okay. Dear Billy Ballgag, I need your advice in a very difficult situation. I'm in my 30s and my sister is a year older than me. Our parents divorced when we were teenagers, and we've, we have always been close. I get along very good with my dad, and I feel like I'm his little twin. My looks, personality, work ethic all resemble my father. Well, that's great. My sister looks nothing like him but resembles my mom. I recently got too drunk with my dad, and his wife and he were complaining about my sister, always calling him, asking for money. He has always treated her strangely. Oh my God! And recently admitted he's not my sister's, my sister's father. What? And that my mother had an affair with his best friend. Holy shit! His friend he's talking about looks like my sister, and they share many personality traits. So your dad hung in there after that, after his best friend banged his fucking wife and then raised the kid. Oh, my God. 
My sister doesn't know, but my mother admitted it, and I recently found a letter from the 1980s from my mother talking about the whole thing. Is it my place to tell her or to talk to my parents and see if they feel like telling her? What the hell should I do? What would you do? I love your cartoon and the podcast. I've seen every episode. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Thank you very much. All that nice stuff. Um, yeah, I would talk to your mom. I talked to your mom and I'd say she needs to know. All right, and then I would see what the fuck happened. And uh and if she refuses to tell her, then I would talk to a professional. Not some fucking shit joke telling comedian because that's that's a tough one. I I I I don't know what to tell you on that one. But my advice to you would be to talk to your mom and be like, "Look. All right, I was cool with, you know, keeping the Santa Claus secret, but this is a different ball game, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. All right, that's kind of a bummer to end on, but, uh, wow, that's, that's fucking bananas. Jesus Christ. All right, I got to get my head together, man. I got to do a show tonight in Reykjavik. Hey, and then I go on tour. I go on tour, and then I'm in Copenhagen, and then Stockholm, Sweden, and then fucking Oslo, and then I'm in fucking Helsinki and then I'm in Amsterdam then I have a day off and then I end up in Tel Aviv in uh, Israel all right and you know who else is fucking patrolling these waters over here all things comedy's uh, host of something's burning the shirtless wonder one of the most fun fucking people I've ever met in my life Bert Kreischer so uh, definitely go out and check him out is I believe I just saw a video of him. He just ended in Manchester, England. Um, and I guarantee you, he's got a bunch of new friends out there. If any, if any city was waiting for fucking Burt Kreischer to show up, it's Manchester, England. But he's, uh, he's going to be tearing through Scandinavia. So get your fitness goals where they need to be because you're about ready to see the fucking, the machine, Bert Kreischer. All right, go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on, in on you on Thursday. Here we go. Ask Bill. Uh, Bill, I am currently engaged, but I'm kind of over it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. I am, let, let me read that again. Let's, let's all just take a deep breath and let's take that, let take when it's time to change. Um, let's take that one in again. Uh, I am Bill. I am currently engaged, but I'm kind of over it. Um, you know what? I might need the help of a female on this one. Hey, Nia. Nino. You want to help me on this one? I got a relationship question. You ever get the feeling your girlfriend's mad at you and you haven't even done anything? I think I just heard it. Exhale. What's that? You can't talk because your voice, you're making lunch? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm recording right now. Yeah, and you hit me with this attitude. I'm sorry. She. How? What I want? I, I just had a, a. Jesus, this is getting really awkward. Yeah, all right. My girlfriend's under the weather, and I actually forgot. She told me she was under the weather like 20 minutes ago, and that's how self absorbed I am. Cleo, get down. All right. Just listen to this. Okay, because I think I also need, like, female help on this one. Could you take your hands off your hips and stop staring at me like that? <laughs> come on. <laughs> do you not want to do this? If you don't want to do it. Okay, okay. Bill, I am currently engaged, but I'm kind of over it. <laughs> she just laughed. Huh? This is a female. This is why I have you in here. Can you just talk to the people with your voice here? Hi, how are you? You sound like Demi Moore. I like that. You know what? I already talked about Andrew McCartney, right? Brought up Rob Lowe. I got the whole Brad Pack here. Why don't you? You don't trust me. You got to look on your face like you not trust me, like I'm going to make you look stupid. I'm not. I generally want your help on this. It's a low-budget podcast. We only have one microphone. All right. I'm currently engaged, but I'm kind of over it. Um, I love him, but our relationship isn't working anymore. I keep making excuses like my schedule has changed. I'm working and going to school, so I'm just stressed, etc., cetera, uh, et cetera. But uh, honestly, the excuses aren't working anymore. 
I want us to get back to when we were having fun and sex and not arguing. He gets frustrated. He gets frustrated with me when I don't want to cuddle with him at night or fuck him at 4 a.m. <laughs> when I when I have to get up at seven in the morning to go to work, uh, then come home at five and cook him dinner and get to sleep by 11. And then she writes, "Okay, pause." In the email, um, why does he want to fuck? Or cuddle at 4 a.m. when I'm sleeping. Is this like a guy thing? I don't understand what he's thinking. This is my argument. It's 4 in the morning. Number two, he's half asleep, which means I'll have to wake up and get on top and do all the work. What the fuck? Number three, if I don't sleep, I'll be cranky in the morning. Then he'll be mad at me because I'm being a total bitch. And four, I'm being, uh, I like being alone. I love sleeping by myself. Granted, in the beginning, it was fun to sleep next to him, but now I want my own bed back. I don't understand what it is that he's thinking. Okay, continuing. I guess she was digressing here. I'm almost done here. All right, are you enjoying this here? Okay, she's shaking it in. She's got a very serious look in her face. This is why I brought her in. An expert. This is like Oprah, our relationship expert. Okay, here we go. Uh, We are planning to move in together, but it's not a good idea because I'm not really in the relationship anymore. I'd rather be alone. In addition, is there an axe murderer outside? (laughs) <laughs> in addition <laughs> I just really realized that that was yeah all right in addition um come close to the mic sweetie here we go sit down take a load off you're not feeling well um in addition he's the first man I've ever had sex with don't read this because you read way faster than me just listen to my the soothing tones of my awful voice you just snorted when you laughed that's adorable she's the first He's the only person she's ever had sex yeah, with. Yeah, now don't, don't comment yet, okay? We're building it up. We got the listeners riveted at this point. Okay, someone's being hacked to death outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition, he's the first man I've ever had sex with. Um, I am faithful to him, but when we have days like these, I think, is this really as good as it gets? I'm sure he's thinking the same thing when I'm being an asshole. <laughs> That's the femur right there. That's the, You really got to give the chainsaw full fucking force there. Um. Oh, well, they they're taking out that tree over there. Yeah, that's okay. Sick tree. Yeah, the sick tree. We had a sick tree. The tree had AIDS on our block and just keeled over. It was very I sad. We 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 stood out there with candles. Don't it had tree AIDS. AIDS. It, it had AIDS. tree. It, it was HIV positive. Don't make light of AIDS. I'm not making light of AIDS. Jim Norman. I'm making Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know who to get more offended. That you're trashing Jim Norton. Or you're saying that I'm ripping him off. You do not. (laughs) Why is my voice cracking? You do not. All right, let's get back to this. I don't know. I could totally be seeing this from a fucked up spot. Actually, I think I am because he's great. Now she's going back this way. She must have her period this week. She's all over the map. Ow. Did you really have to punch me right fucking there? All right. He gives me whatever I want. And as far as material things go, typical broad. He buys me stuff. He's great. (laughs) I don't want to fuck him anymore, but look at all this stuff. Um, <laughs> um, he listens to me. Sarah, I'm taking this one seriously because I think this girl's in a serious situation here. Um, that's why I keep saying serious as many times as I can in the sentence. Seriously? Seriously. Um, he listens to me whenever I whine, and he has conversations with me that show me life from a different perspective, and he's willing to work at our relationship and is committed to me. Those are the things that I love about him. Da 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 right? I am getting through it. I gotta do fifth she just gave me the sign. Wrap it up. All right, fine. You're speaking for the listeners. I'm going. Uh but I can't live like this anymore. This girl is all over the map. I told him once that I wanted some space, like I wanted to wake up alone some days, and he blew it out of proportion and says, Okay, I'll give you plenty of space. Let's break up. He did that shit. Um and then she said, I asked if that's what he wanted. Because that wasn't because that wasn't looking like the worst option in the world. Oh, Jesus. But his voice cracked, and he said, no, that's not what I want. So long story short, I'm still waking up to him. He still asks why we can't fuck at 4 a.m., and we're still engaged. I'm willing to say if we can make a few adjustments in our relationship. I'm willing to stay if we can, uh, if we can make a few adjustments in our relationship. Otherwise, how do I get out and hurt him the least? All right, here we go. I brought in a female for this one because I know, I know what. You want me to tell you what I'm thinking first? No. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Um, she needs to break up with him. Okay, and why? Yeah. Because she doesn't love him anymore. She's not in love with him. She recognizes all his good traits and stuff, but that's not a reason to stay with someone. If she can't give him what he needs, because at no point did she say, well, no, she talked about him wanting to cuddle and this and that and other. I think the 4 a.m. doesn't mean anything. I think he just wants to be close to her, and that's the one time that maybe she slows down and is in bed, and that's where he can wrap his arms around her and, and do all that sort of thing, because it sounds like she's super busy all the time, so he wants to spend that time with her. So she, let's stay on track here. So why, why do you feel like she should break up with him? Because she's, she's not in love with him anymore, clearly. She's not in love with him anymore. She loves him. He's a great guy. Um, but she's not in love with him. Yeah, she no, she isn't. Yeah, I think that she's bringing up the good traits is she's trying to convince herself to stay in the relationship because yes. she doesn't want to hurt him. Yes, she wants to be alone. She's not ready to get married, and that's fine. He's going to be heartbroken no matter what because obviously he is in love with her. He wants to work it out, but it's cliche, but it's like if she really loves him, then she will let him go so that he can find somebody okay. that well, wants to do all that kind of stuff that she's right. – not because she's a bad person. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute before we get going. Before we get going, let's. What, what's the? What's the? Uh, hot, what? <laughs> this is a great topic for the podcast. Breaking up with somebody sucks because you get. You know they're gonna start whimpering. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're gonna dry their tears with the dirty pages of a TV guide. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking about a coffee table. What would be on the? Co I always break up with girls near a coffee table. Do you? Well, yeah. You're not gonna be sitting on the bed. You're on the bed. You're gonna want to fuck. No. Um. Sorry. I just sometimes say dumb shit on this. Um. What? What? Is, what is the best way? What is the best way to break up with someone to hurt him the least? Do you have a technique? No. There's no way. Well, could you try to be funny on this thing and just try to come up, <laughs> come up with a technique? Um, I I I got one for you. Send an e. Send a send him a card. Mm -hmm. That is actually for like a good occasion. So it'll have like balloons and like silly animals on it. Congratulations! Yeah, and, and then on the inside it says I'm breaking up. Yeah, exactly. You just <laughs> you cross out all the good stuff. You yeah. or you add words. Yeah. You aren't the love of my life, <laughs> but there's gonna be all this this these cool pictures. You have a new life. Congratulations! She can find um a girl to oh she could be like oh let's have a threesome. And find, like, a really hot, sexy, funny, amazing girl. And they all have, like, dinner and drinks and they all have a good time. Go back to the bedroom and they all start doing it. And she could slowly slip out. And she's got her bags packed already. Yeah, it's like, you know what, that's like. Car, and she drives away. <laughs> she drives away while the two of them are having, like, probably amazing sex. That's and fucking she awesome. She never sees him again. <laughs> Awesome yeah, and you know what's funny? No, it's okay. You know what's funny is he would get no sympathy. He went to the bar. He's like, my girlfriend broke up with me. Oh, God, dude, how she did it? How did she do it? Well, she fucking, we had a threesome, and I start, this unbelievably hot girl, I start banging, and she just slipped out of the window. I'd be like, wait a minute. That's like, you know what that's like? That's like as a comedian, if you have to cancel a gig, but you, you do the effort to give them a replacement yeah. comedian, so there's, there's no pain. Yeah, that's what she should do. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause? I knew there was a reason I brought you, and that was fucking awesome. Fucking Nia. There you go. Good for you. Good for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being on the podcast. This is, you know what? This is this weird thing, like when you do a panel on a talk show, and no matter what, when the person wraps it up, you, feel, you still feel slighted. Like, I was just killing there. We're going to commercial? Well, listen, thanks a lot. Good luck on your movie. We're going to be right back with the Monday Morning Podcast. That was fucking awesome. High five. Yeah. There you go. Go make me a sandwich. <laughs> All right, huh? How fucking cool is she? Jesus Christ. There's no reason to even, to even try and top that one. I, was, I thought that was going to be a new, uh, a new segment on the podcast. Wow. If she ever breaks up with me, she better fucking do it that way because that would uh... – <laughs> I wonder how long into the threesome you did before you actually fucking discovered it. You know? And is that technically a threesome? You know, because if you didn't bang the other person? You know what that's like? That's like you get a base hit, but you fall down in the way of the first base, and then the right fielder throws you out. Is it, Bill? Is that what it's like? I don't think it is. All right. 
don't do that shit. All right, number three. Last Saturday. Last say. Say. As they say in Boston. Say. Come on over and fucking say. <laughs> There's no consonants in that word. <laughs> say. Thursday, Friday, say. I always do that with brevity. <laughs> say. Um, last say, I was out with my friends and I was shit faced. We were at a bar and I was sitting at a table when I saw the girl. Saw the girl. She was absolutely beautiful. I don't know why, but something told me I had to go up to that girl. See, they always start fucking phenomenal. <laughs> Sun was out. Jesus was walking on the clouds. <laughs> she saw me looking at her, and I get her a, w- and I give her a wink when she smiled at me. Jesus, you went with that? Did you give her the double point too? <laughs> um, I then tried. I then turned to my friends and said loudly, "Give me a fucking pen." Oh Jesus, is he drunk? Give me a fucking pen. <laughs> Uh, They gave me a pen, and I wrote my number on a napkin and went over to her and her friend. I slapped the napkin. This guy's – I love this guy. This guy's got – you're wearing a scarf too? This guy's like the most interesting man in the world. Mm -hmm. I love him. He's wrestling a badger in the corner. Hang on a second. Give me a pen. He goes, I slapped the napkin on the table and went to her, went to her ear and said, I don't drink often, but I think you are fucking beautiful and walked away. Mm -hmm. What? What? <laughs> no, he's hammered. This yeah. is fucking hilarious. I totally missed the joke in this. This guy is is completely fucking hammered. Right. So he's sitting there, head bobbling. <laughs> winks I'll at drink her. off him. I think you're fucking <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> okay. Call this number. It's gonna change your life, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. So, anyways, uh, being shit face, I didn't know any better, and I guess I went to the table and put my head. What? I went to the table and put my head was down at that point, according to my friends. She wanted to know what my name was and stuff, so my friends went over and talked to her and talked me up. Before she left, she came up to me. This guy's still in the game here. And told me her and her friends were leaving to go to a different bar. I asked her her name. We talked a little bit, and she left with her friends. Uh, I told her, please text me. Three, four days passed, and I hadn't heard anything. I couldn't get her out of my head. She was seriously the most beautiful girl I had ever seen. Yeah, after drinking a 12-pack of Keystone. Say. <laughs> um, and there was something about her. I know I was shit-faced, but I have never felt that way. I looked, uh, I looked online for her on Facebook. Uh, the other person she was with had gone to high school with. We weren't friends, but we knew each other. I found the girl on her friend list. There we go. I know that is creepy. But I want to message her and tell her I am sorry for being so drunk. But I really want to talk to her. I feel uh, she wouldn't have come up to me before she left. And my friends, and asked my friends my name if she wasn't somehow somewhat intrigued. I don't think that's creepy. Nowadays, the old school, no. when I grew up, that's not creepy. No, I, not I think creepy. if you just say, listen, I'm sorry I was so drunk the other night. I really meant what I said. And uh, I'm sure this freaks you out. That I, I don't even say freaking it out. Like, I'm not trying to invade your privacy. I just wanted to say... I meant those things that I said. Yeah. Respectfully yours. Here's my phone number, my address. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and just leave it at that. And leave it at that. There yeah. you go. No more communication yeah. after that because then you're venturing into weird territory. All right. What time we got on the podcast here? What am I? 102.19. All right. All right. Well, it, well, we're getting close to the end here. We got overrated and underrated. Um, with that, also, I want to remind everybody um, that Amazon thing's been working out for me. Um it's a good thing, so I don't have to charge for the podcast. So this is basically what I've been telling people. If, uh, if you're going to buy something on Amazon, uh, rather than going directly to Amazon, Amazon.com, go to, the, uh, go to BillBird.com, click on Podcast, and on the right-hand side, you'll see uh, just under the iTunes link, you'll see the Amazon window. And you just click on that, and I will get credit for driving traffic to Amazon.com. You don't have to hit anything else after that, and uh, I'm not telling you to buy anything. I'm just saying if you're going to. And you're going to go to Amazon. Just please go to BillBird.com first. Even click, if you're just going to browse. Podcast. Even if huh? you're just going to browse for something. I don't know if it works that way. They, oh. they got to spend some money. Oh, they do? Yeah. It's like oh. I'm driving, driving people to a drug dealer. Even if you're just going to look at the cocaine. <laughs> Can I just sniff it for a second? And then no. They, they need to make their money. Sniff it for a yeah. second. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're just going to browse. If you just want to see what they're doing with their website. Um... Yeah, that's it. It's a great way to donate to the podcast. And like I said, 10% of all uh, donations will then go on to the Wounded Warriors Project. So mm-hmm. you support this podcast. You support the troops. 
America. Uh, America, that's right. Buy shit you don't need. Support the troops. It's all right there. Couple of clicks of the mouse. All right. Weight loss, dog pox, and banging. There we go. All right. Billy Boy. He goes, <laughs> I got no nickname for you. I don't worry about don't worry about it. Thanks for the podcast. I'm a sales rep and use your podcast to de stress. Is that a word? Mm-hmm. Uh, don't you do that with jeans? That's on, distress. Oh. On the Monday <laughs> afternoon drive home. Oh, nice. Six months ago, my company laid me off, and I've used your podcast to fat, mate, fat shame myself and work out during the day. I love it. Good Dude, fat you. shaming works. No, it doesn't. Yes, well, it does. I guess it did it in does. this case. It does for me. I stand in the mirror shirtless, and I just go, look what you did. <laughs> look what you did, you piece of shit. Nobody's going to love you. And next thing you know, I'm out there. Eating kale, jogging down the street with my white legs. <laughs> um, he said I dropped 40 also, pounds. yeah, can we talk about how you're dressed for a sport that would, like, never have you? Why are you dressed like that? Because no, I was going to go on a bike ride. <laughs> you're matching. You actually look pretty cute, I have to say. But, I mean, no guy wants to look cute. Oh, all right. Guys, yeah. I Oh, my look God, cute. you look cute. You do. You look cute. I would, I would, I would give you a second glance at the gym if you were wearing your little oh, Nike Jesus outfit. Oh, Jesus Christ. Really? That matches. And what, am I supposed to be thrilled by that? Yeah, you yeah, should be. I, 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 oh, shit. You'd give me a second glance. Yeah, yeah. You should be happy. All right. But you Consider fucking, yourself lucky. I don't like your mint chocolate chips fucking colored sweater you have <laughs> this on. This is rag and bone, okay? Okay, this listen is some to this real guy. fashion shit. I've dropped 40 pounds, and it's been great. Good for From you. From 260 to 220, and size nice. four, 42 pants to th- size 36. Nice. Good for you. How the fuck wait, are you? Wait a minute. Yeah, how are you size? How are you 220 pounds size 36 pants? Mm, how does that work? 42 to a 36. This guy's got to be jacked. He's on the juice. <laughs> he's got fucking. He's got giant shoulders, 80 pound shoulders. Um, he go, anyway, so here's my dilemma. He goes, I have a lab, not a pot, a lab golden retriever mix, Aww. and we go to the park near my house every day to play fetch off the leash. There is usual the usual there is the usual suspects of about ten to fifteen people that bring their dogs out to play. I live in a slightly unsafe city, parentheses Baltimore. The wire. Yeah, wait a minute. Didn't they shoot the wire there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Slightly. Um, other not than, all Baltimore. Yeah. Hashtag not all Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, you, you got you got the fucking waterfront. That's sort of nice for half Anymore. a second. Although didn't what's his face? He had a meeting down there one time, one of the episodes. Oh. The, the guy you like, the English guy Edgy on that Salva? show. I don't know what his fucking name is. Oh, his name on the show, though, was... Um... Sturgis. Stryker. Yeah. Wait. Spalding. Sterling? No. St- All right. Let's move on. <laughs> um, and last week, we were outside discussing Stringer Bell. Stringer Bell, yeah. Yeah. I did yeah. put some new words in my head that I can remember. And last week, we were outside discussing the group of kids, groups of kids on bikes that are grabbing women's asses while jogging in the park. Mm -mm. So one guy starts telling the women to grab the kid that does that and hold them there until the police come. Oh, yeah, that that's really safe and realistic for women to do. Is that sarcasm? (laughs) Yes, that is sarcasm. Keep reading. Well, just because he addresses it in the next sentence. All right, don't fucking order me around on my porch. What's wrong with you? Nothing. What? Jesus Christ. Um, he goes, I think you can see the... D- <laughs> Keep reading. I've made my comment. Continue. You are drunk with power. Um, he goes, I think you can see the danger here of anyone, any one adult grabbing a 14 to 16-year-old kid and think, think the other kids will just ride away. You're going to get beat down and probably hit in the head with a brick. Sounds like the beginning of a Death Wish movie. Um, so this same guy, who, by the way, is a hedge fund manager and knows everything, starts telling me all the fights he's been in. Uh, he goes, I'll buy each listener on, of this podcast a beer if he's even <laughs> been in one fight. He goes, so his wife is there and everyone is listening. He says, I want to fight one time with just my mouth. So before you can say anything else, I say, what did you do? Blow them? <laughs> He goes, Fantastic. he goes, well, everyone laughs. He can't really say anything, and he storms off, gets about 10 yards away, and tells his wife she has to come home. She throws me a wink and says, that was hysterical. 
I think you hurt his feelings. Uh, oh, ooh, Jesus mm. Christ. Doors opening and other Don't doors get closing. It, size 36 pants. Go he goes, get it. I found out a couple of days later that I'm going back to work and I'm being re- relocated. He's going to say, can I bang her before I leave? That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> back to work and I'm being relocated over a thousand miles away. What's the problem? Well, his wife, his Oh, you wrote it wrong. Well, his wife is a hot piece of ass and has started sending me Facebook's messages and Uh-oh. texts. Oh, texts? What do you mean texts? When she gets your number? I you never... skipped a part of that story, sir. Saying she wants to sleep with me before I leave. They have mm. no kids, and she showed me divorce papers that she is willing. she's waiting to file uh, after he gets his next bonus check in oh August. God. Normally, I'm a pretty upstanding dude. He's got to build up credibility. Yes. People like me in the community. I've recently lost weight. I have a lab <laughs> golden retriever mix, and I go to the dog park. <laughs> he wants to fuck this guy's wife. Uh, he goes, I don't believe in crossing lines, but this one feels different. I'm moving within the next six weeks. What should I do? And thanks, and go fuck yourself. Nia, I'm going to pass it over to you. <laughs> You know good and goddamn well you need to stay away from that woman. All right? You're doing well. You lost weight. You got nice little one-liners. You know how to put people in their place. Walk away. You'll find somebody to fuck a thousand miles away where you get relocated. Okay? This is not the last piece of hot ass that you're going to come across. So relax yourself. So what you're saying... This- Pat yourself on the back for the good line and the fact that you're getting attention from hot pieces of ass who are looking to take their husbands for all their worth before they divorce them and start banging the smart ass at the dog park. Be happy for that, but you can fuck somebody else. So what you're saying is it's like when Columbus sailed over to America, which was actually down to Cuba, I believe, before he started chopping off people's hands because they couldn't find gold for his fillings. Okay. Um, they saw branches, right, in the water that let them know that land was coming. Okay. Like that was a good sign. So you're saying this this is just a hot piece of ass floating by, yeah. letting them know that he's he's about ready to get on Pussy Island. Absolutely. So it's, <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. That was a long I'm way saying. to go. All right. So just 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 walk away. I'm sure it's very flattering, but you already you already humiliated the guy. You did you did your you did your work. That was a great line. What did you do? Blow them? That's fantastic. And she's been waiting for a guy to come along to put her husband into his in his place. And all that stuff. So yeah, good for you. But no, don't don't be that guy. Walk away. All right. You'll find somebody else. I say do it. All right. <laughs> Fame. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it. You, you know you're the voice of reason. Go ahead. You're, you're absolutely right. Because you have no idea why she wants to do that. You know, because she might in an argument and be like, "Oh yeah, and you remember that guy at the dog park? Well, I fucked him exactly. And he was better than you." And then all of a yeah, sudden, and this she guy sounds crazy and this, too. And this is, why is she showing you divorce papers and like, "I'm going to divorce him as soon as he gets his next bonus check"? Stay away from that oh, crazy yeah. broad. Stay away from her. Good call. No, nah, she's not so. That's TP right there. What's that? Toxic. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Let's uh, let's get to the letters here. All right. Girl smokes a lot of weed. Hey, Cincinnati Bowtie Billy. I don't even know what that means. I got to look that up. Um, I've been with my girlfriend for two years and lived with her for about a year and a half. She has smoked weed since the day we met, which doesn't bother me because I used to smoke myself. What bothers me is how many times she smokes it in a given day. We will sometimes be hanging out watching TV and she will out of nowhere get up to grab her bowl to take a hit. I've even caught her getting out of bed in the middle of the night to take a hit. I don't want to tell her she can't smoke. After all, I used to smoke myself. Uh, She just looks like a drug fiend. (laughs) Always trying to get her fix. I don't get why she has to be high 24-7. I have a beer, one beer after work, maybe one to two days a week, and sometimes she will throw that in my face if I comment about her constant weed smoking, which isn't even close to the same thing. I've always said this about weed smokers. I've always said that about them. Like the level that they get, they get fucking high at work. Not all of them. I'm just saying, you know, like they'll fucking go out. They'd be like if I went out in the parking lot and shotgunned a beer and came in like with booze on my breath. Um, and it is addictive. Not to everybody, but you can become addicted. It sounds like she is addicted to this shit. 
Like she needs it to help her sleep. She needs it so she can fucking deal, man. Um, anyway, she goes. Some, he goes. Sometimes she'll throw that in my face if I comment about her constant weed smoking, which isn't even close to the same thing. She also complains that she is broke yet has no problem spending a hundred dollars on a bag of weed. A bag of weed. What kills me is she will sometimes ask me to help. Oh, help her out with a bill or whatever, and I'm just like, what the fuck? How about you don't buy weed? Our relationship is great. This isn't a deal breaker or anything. It's just an annoyance. Should I just deal with it or should I try to get her to chill out with weed? What would you do with the lovely Nia smoked weed all day? Thanks. Go fuck yourself. I, I would address it. I would definitely address it. Okay. Um, yeah, she has a problem with that shit. If you're waking up in the middle of the night and taking another hit, I mean, I always just equate it to drinking because for some reason people can see alcoholism but they can't see addiction with weed. Um, if you were with somebody and in the middle of the night, they got up and poured themselves a belt or two, you know, a couple fingers of scotch and slammed it and then went back to sleep. Or right in the middle of a movie, they went over and just fucking shotgunned a beer. And I, that, cause that's basically what they're doing. It's not like they go out and make a drink and they're sipping it. They're not that, you know, they're getting high. They're not gradually getting drunk. It's like you do it, boom, you're high. Um, and if she's doing it all the time and she doesn't have, she's not making any money and then she's asking you to help her out. I mean, if what if you didn't have a job and you were drinking at the level that she was smoking and you were spending a hundred bucks on beer every week and sometimes, you, you know, you would ask her for help. Um, what would she do? She would be upset. Now, this is what I would do. I would bring it up with her. She's going to get mad. And this is the thing. You cannot get mad too. If she yells and calls you names and everything, just do not get mad. Just sit there and know that she is, you know, you're going to lose the fight. If you bring up her weed smoking... And then she's like, you know, what the fuck? You fucking blah, 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 blah. And then if you, if you go to where the fuck she is there, you're going to lose. Because then it's become a name-calling thing. And, you know, she has successfully gotten it out of the arena of what she's doing is fucked up. Uh, you, I, you just need to stay in the pocket and be like, listen, I don't mind that you smoke weed. I drink beer. Okay? But you are smoking weed 24-7. You're getting up in the middle of the night and you're smoking weed and I'm worried about you. And you're asking me on some time, you're blowing $100 a week on weed and you're asking me to help you out sometime. Okay, now in all fairness, if I was blowing 100 bucks on beer every week and I was, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, drinking a beer and they're going to pull that shit, that isn't the same thing. Yes, it is. It is the same thing. You're altering your mental state with alcohol, but except you're using, you're, 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 using marijuana, all right? And, uh, you know, I care about you, and you're kind of going down, you know, it's basically it's your job to keep your woman in line, and it's her job to keep you in line. And that isn't some sexist shit by when I say keep you in line, which just means when they see you going out of bounds, they see you going upriver a little bit, like Colonel Kurtz shaving your head, going the horror. As you sit there in the corner, fucking shotgun and a beer, it's her job to be like, I think you're, you're starting to, your drinking's getting a little out of control. That's what you do when you love somebody. So just know that she might not be ready to hear that shit, but, you know, she has to hear it from you. You're just trying to help her out. And if she flips out and calls you a bunch of names, just say, listen, let's, I've said what I had to say. I'm more than willing to discuss this with you later when you've calmed down, but I'm not going to get into a name calling, uh, argument with you and you leave it at that and then th they have no fucking choice they have no choice other than to just fucking chill at that point or they continue calling your names but if, if after that they're gonna they're gonna owe you an apology all right and if they don't apologize and they can't admit that they're wrong that's a whole other fucking red flag you know because i couldn't be in a fucking relationship when, if with somebody who who you know, if they fuck up, can't be like, all right, you know what? You were right on that one. You know, you got to have that. If you don't have. Um, all right. Rude mom advice. Dear Billy, wet T-shirt. He wouldn't want to see that. 
Uh, I need advice about my mother. A couple of years ago, while visiting my husband and me, um, my mother made a comment to my husband out of the blue that she doesn't want her money mixing with my husband's money after she dies. Oh, God. It's really fucking amazing how stupid people are that far into their life. In other words, she only wants me to have it or something like that. My husband didn't say anything at the time, but later told me after she left that she's not welcomed in the house anymore due to her rudeness. Honestly, he couldn't care less about money. It's not a lot of money. He just didn't like her making that rude comment. Well, I can say as an older person, you should just laugh it off. You know, you don't want to ban your wife's mom from coming into the fucking house. You just have to accept the fact that that's her mom and her your wife has unconditional love for her. So you just t- you just end up rather than resenting them showing up, you you turn it into joy by, you know, if they think you're dumb, act dumber. You know, if you find something that fucking annoys them. Like I got a buddy of mine, he figured out his mother-in-law is a narcissist or a person that he works with was a narcissist. And it used to really bother him. But now what he does is he tells stories where he compliments, over the top compliments other people that that narcissist knows. And he said it drives her fucking nuts. I mean, that's what you want to do. Um, Anyway, my mother has always been a rude person, has made snide comments such as this to other family members for as long as I can remember. I feel that she's always been able to get away with her bad behavior since... What? With her bad behavior since something has a history of gaslighting people. Plus, she's really good looking. So I think that makes people forgive her more easily. Well, why don't you tell her to shut up? Anyway, I guess I need to talk to her about this eventually, but I'm not sure how to approach it, how to approach her about it. I've successfully delayed her from visiting for the past two years due to COVID, but I'm running out of town time. She's an intimidating person. Plus, banning parents from the household is a big no-no in Chinese culture. Mom's Chinese-American. My dad's white. uh, They are divorced. Oh, okay. Well, what does that have to do with you? Uh, What's the divorce thing have to do with anything? Plus, banning houses is a big no-no in Chinese culture. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, don't do that. You don't, don't, I don't, don't ban her from the house. But I think your husband's banning her from the house because you're not saying anything. Um... Or you married someone like your mother. <laughs> now you're stuck in between the two of them. Um, any, any advice you or the lovely Nia would be greatly appreciated. Love your podcast. And my husband and I plan on attending one of your shows in the near future. Thanks and go hug yourself. Look at you. You got a nice heart. Um, what, are you af- what are you afraid that your mother's going to do? Just take her aside and just say, you know, don't talk to my husband like that. What's she going to do? You know, get mad. Who gives a get mad? I don't give a fuck. What are you mad about? I didn't. Don't get mad at me. I didn't do anything. Don't say rude shit to my husband. You're welcomed over here, but you're not welcomed over here saying rude shit to my husband. If you say something, I'm going to call you on it. All right? That's it. Stop being an asshole just because you're good looking. All right? Get over yourself. You had your time. No one gives a fuck about your money. Don't say that because then she won't give you your money. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I got to be honest with you. One of the main reasons the world is so fucked up is people don't say anything. And these fucking abusive assholes just continue to just sort of do what it is that they're doing. Um, and nobody says anything. That's like all of this shit since, since uh, all of these, these, this woke fucking movement. Like how fucking sideways this whole thing has gone and how people used the fact that innocent people were like sexually assaulted as a way to to get their fucking agenda that has nothing to do with any of that, you know, in through the door, to rush through the door. Like that shit always happens. Like after like 9-11, the government like used that to just invade everybody's fucking privacy under the fucking umbrella of fighting terrorism. And they really just wanted to spy on their own goddamn people. Oh, Bill, are you gonna go down this road? No, I am not. Um, should I buy my crush a Christmas present? No! Creepy. They don't know that you're in, crushing on them. Um, all right. Hey, old Billy Freckles. Big fan of your show and a long-time listener. 
I have a little dilemma with the lady. I have a crush on a girl that I have known for three years now. Uh, she is a wonderful person, but we work together. I was thinking of giving her a Christmas present to show her that I'm into her. After hashtag me too, I'm a little scared, as, as you should be. Um, and I don't know what to get. Well, don't get her what, what that lunatic at the morning show would get those chicks. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I was hoping you and the lovely Nia could give me some advice slash suggestions if it's a good idea. And if so, what would be a good div- gift? Oh, look it. Look it. Come on. It's time for advice. Hey. Your host, Billy Blunt. That's me. And I'm ripping off this melody from somebody else. All right. Um. Oh, let's see. What would I do? Uh, that's very different. Does she know that on any level that you like her? Um, you've been crushing on her for a while now. I I think you just uh, uh, you you gotta you gotta move your conversation past just being friends at work. You gotta start. I don't. I mean, I don't know how this works in today's age. I mean, you, day and age. I I think you gotta start hitting on her. You know. I mean, I know that there's a lot of hairy leg women out there that resent that, you know. Maybe if they shaved their legs, it would happen more often and they wouldn't be so upset about it. Oh, my God. It's like so annoying when like a guy likes you. So fucking it. That's not the kind of attention that we're talking about. Shut up. Oh, God, that fucking bitch moaning and complaining. Um, I want you to initiate it, but not initiate, initiate it. I want you to be confident and strong, but I still want to feel safe and fucking in control. You want everything, right? That's, is, that what you're, is that what you're fucking saying? You want the whole thing to go exactly how you want it to go, is basically what you're saying. This is how nuts women are. They routinely write articles. Can women have it all? That's how fucking nuts and selfish they are. No, you can't have it all. There's always a sacrifice that's made. Okay? How many fucking times do you dumb broads got to ask that fucking question? No, you, you can, can I become a mom and it won't hurt my career? No. <laughs> if you want to have a kid and you don't want to hurt your career, it's going to hurt you as a parent. You have to make fucking sacrifices. And so does the guy. Fucking dopes. Can we really have it all? I don't know, but God knows you're going to try. Um, should I buy my crush a Christmas present? I would not. I wouldn't. I, You know, I would somehow get it. I mean, I don't know. It's been three fucking years at some point. I mean, you, you got to fucking tell her how you feel. And then ask her out. Yeah. Because what you're going to do is if you ask her out and she says yes, and then you guys are dating this time next year, the level of Christmas present that you're going to have to buy because you already bought her a certain level present when you guys weren't even in a relationship, you know, when she's going to be reading all these articles, can women really have it all? <laughs> can I have four kids and also work 80 hours a week and everybody's happy? No, what a fucking dumb question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's what I would do. I, I think rather than buy her a gift, I think you need to verbally communicate on some level that you're interested in taking her out on a date. All right. Rather than coming out of nowhere with no no uh, conversation to that effect, and just show up with like a clattering, I think that would be a little weird. All right, time for advice. It's oh my god, time for advice. This person just did the layup. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to fuck it. I'm gonna have to play it again. You know, we. It's time for advice. I'm sorry. With your host. It was a layup. Was I? I mean, what was I supposed to do? All right. Hello, Billy, the sober dad. I love, I love that title. I don't enjoy it at night, but I do love it. All right. I'm a big fan of yours from Portugal, and I need your advice. All right. I started. Oh, Lisbon. Are you from Lisbon? I started college two years ago, and I'm not doing great. Well, oh, guess what? I can relate. Um, I used to be in the top of my class and now I flunked a bunch of subjects. Well, I, no, I never did that. I sucked in high school and continued the tradition in college. Uh, I'm in college for mechanical engineering. Thanks to 
my love for physics and math. I started writing a book, and it's been hard to do both things and stay motivated for college. I'm also trying to convince my parents to buy me a drum kit since I can't afford it out of my own pocket. Uh, well, you got better get your grades better before that, or get the drum kit before your grades come out. I want to learn the drums, write my book, and finish college. How do I find motivation and time for everything? Oh, look at this guy. He wants it all. Uh, thanks for the podcast. You've cheered me, cheered up my Mondays and Thursdays. You're a dear fan. I can't say the name. Uh, P.S. It's okay if you can't pronounce my name. Most Americans fail at that. Uh Wow, Oliveria. Oliveira. Um, that sounds like the wrestler that loses every week. Jose Estrada. Um, okay, all right, sir. Well, thank you so much for the kind words. It's cool that you want to learn drums. It's cool that you want to write a book, but your priority right now is finishing college. And if you're not going to drop out, you're just going to prolong this thing, which is going to get in the way of you eventually finishing your book and your drums. Your parents are probably helping you out with college. Uh, you just have to prioritize things, all right? The priority every day is you get your schoolwork done first, okay? And then you figure out what's your priority, writing this book or drums, okay? Then maybe writing the book is second in line, and then the drums is how you blow off steam. That is how I would do it, all right? Um, I wouldn't try to convince my parents to buy me a drum kit either if I wasn't doing well in school. So I think uh, you got that creative thing where you got a little bit of ADD and you just need to, uh, you know, if you just let it ping pong in your head, it's you're still going to be confused. This is how it works for me. I have to, like, make a list every day and just prioritize the things that need to be done. And I just knock them out. And uh, having ADD is a great fucking thing. It gives you fucking energy or something. It just has you, you can do a lot of shit. All right. And a um, couple of adjustments, like a list, because then you can get all ADD uh, or, or fucking OCD about the fucking list. Um, and I like checking shit off because it makes me feel like I'm getting stuff done. So I would just prioritize your schoolwork. Get that done first. Get your grades up. Um, then I would write your book and then I'd play your drums. That's how I would do it personally. And not to mention, you can also, you can also buy a pretty cheap drum kit. You could find a cheap one, you know, then your parents can't hold it over your head. You know, that's just, that's my own I advice. But, uh, it seems to me like you're going to, I, but I think you're going to do really well in life because you're not doing well in school and you're writing a book and you're also interested in music. Um, it seems like you're going to have a very passionate, like you're going to follow your passions in life, which is great. And the fact that you can actually handle, uh, you, you love physics and math, but you can also write a book and you're into drums. You're a very well-rounded person. You just got to dial up the studying a little bit. And I think you should be fine. All right, buddy. Good luck to you. And uh, I hope you get that drum kit. All right. Overrated, underrated, underrated, being prepared, always having napkins and toilet paper slash clothes in your car. <laughs> Sorry, butchered the punchline there. Underrated, being prepared, always having napkins and toilet paper slash clothes in your car. Wow. All right, I don't even want to know what that's about. Uh, overrated, stockpiling guns and shit. You can only use one, right? I don't know. That's exactly what I thought. You got all of those fucking guns. You can only shoot two at a time. And you know, how accurate is that? Um, and then half of those guns, if you emptied the clip, you'd be deaf for the rest of your life, but the zombies would be dead. I don't know. I have a weird thing with guns. I absolutely fucking like, I like guns the way I like cars. I like the older ones. I like, the, like a Glock to me. It's just like, you know, when they started rounding off every four door sedan, um, let me see here. Classic guns. Classic firearms. Jesus Christ. First tipsy L's, now classic firearms. Like, somebody's got to be concerned here. All right. I don't like the German Luger. I'm not into that thing. Just makes me think of evil shit. 
Um, yeah, I like a fucking revolver. Old school revolver, a thirty-eight snub nose. I like all that shit I used to see in all the fucking cop shows. Um, whenever they had an evil person, they always had the... Uh, so they always had uh, one of those Lugers. Wow, look at those fucking World War II rifles. All right, facial scare. <clears throat> all right, Bill, this past weekend, I went to Vegas to visit my brother and his buddy who currently reside there. They actually caught your most recent show in Vegas and had a phenomenal time. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Said I left last Thursday from Tampa and as soon I touched down in Vegas, I received an out of nowhere text from the girl that got away. I was shook. This broad used to live in Tampa about two and a half years ago, but she moved out to L.A. to pursue her career as an actress. The two of us attended the University of Tampa a few years ago and had an on-again, off-again relationship. Long story short, I was in a relationship with another girl. We went on break and I met this girl and was hooked. So anyways, her text said, hey, who are you going to Vegas with? Because I'm going to be there this weekend, too. Uh, my guess is that she had seen my social media. She had been. My guess is that she had seen on my social media that I was going to be in Vegas. When I read the text, I was very surprised and pretty pumped because we hadn't talked in a long time. And like I said, she was the one that got away. She's absolutely gorgeous. And she also happens to be a really good person as well. Jesus Christ, people, what could go wrong here? We hooked up in Vegas and it was amazing to see her. We all went out, did our thing and had one of the best weekends I've had in my life. I'd give you more details, but you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. All right, you gave her the old meat hammer. Way to be subtle. Anyways, <clears throat> the reason why I'm writing to you, though, is because on the plane right back to Tampa, I was thinking about mine and this girl's relationship and all of our history. And a pretty comical slash genius story came to mind about her. I know this is getting long, but I hope it's not as long and boring as that guy writing to explain the fucking origins of Jimmy's a couple of weeks ago. Jesus Christ. Uh, but anyways, like I said, when I first met her, I was immediately attracted to her natural beauty, beauty and her personality. She is one of these ladies who didn't have to wear makeup or do anything special to look sexy. However, one of the first weekends we spent together, I wake up in, with her in bed one morning. I go to give her a kiss and I am, I am immediately troubled. The way the morning sun was shining into the window on her face exposed something I wasn't ready for that early in the morning. This broad has dark hair, and for the first time I noticed she had some dark hair above her lip. Eesh. I was really surprised I didn't catch it before, but it wasn't a thick mustache or anything. It was just like the peach fuzz a 12-year-old boy has before he starts shaving regularly. Regardless, I was, taking, I was taken back, and from that morning... And from that point on that morning, it was all I could notice. Ah, Jesus. Isn't it crazy how visual guys are? That's it. Take the most beautiful woman in the world. You put a, give her a mustache. We, we can't, that's all we can see. It's like I'm kissing fucking Burt Reynolds here. All right. So when I went home, I had to devise a master plan. Operation Mustache Removal. I like this girl way too much, and she was still very hot with the... Ex even with the stash, but I needed a way to get rid of it because I wanted to help her out while also helping myself. All right, now this is why I picked this one here. Listen to this guy. She's got a gorgeous fucking woman. Everything about her is perfect except she has a fucking mustache. Now, how the hell do you bring it up to somebody that you care about that they have a mustache and is fucking turning you off? There's no way to do that without sabotaging the relationship or or really hurting the other person. The only way to do that is if you just completely don't give a shit about the other person and just say, hey, you know, if there's any way you could, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to fucking say it. Well, this is what he did, and this was genius. He said, uh, since we just started seeing each other, I didn't want to come out and say, babe, babe, you shaved today? Seemed a little self-conscious that it is, so I didn't want to tell her and embarrassed or anything like that. I needed a way to remove this stash without being involved. Hence, I did what needed to be done. Listen to this fucking brilliant conspiracy. I called my trustworthy buddy who was playing hockey in Canada at the time and told him I needed him to do me a solid dude. I filled him in on the situation and he was willing to help me out. 
Since he had a weird random Canadian number at the time, I gave him my chick's number and told him to text her and simply say, you have a mustache. I ordered him to say nothing else and not to respond under any circumstances. He texted me back about 20 minutes later and said, mission complete. So this fucking lady, just to get you caught up in case you're confused here with my reading. She gets a random text from a Canadian number out of nowhere that just says you have a mustache. I can't imagine her fucking stomach must have dropped. It's funny. He goes, he, anyways, he goes, later that night, I met her at the bar and she was looking extraordinarily sexy. She seemed, she seemed to have a little pep in her step. I walked up to give her a kiss and I looked above her lip and the peach fuzz mustache was gone. Clean and soft as a baby's bottom. I was very happy how it played out. I helped myself out because that would have bothered me and I helped her become even sexier. Best part being she had no idea that I orchestrated that mission. I didn't have to talk about it, bring it to her attention and hurt her feelings or anything like that. I just had a broad with a clean upper lip. Thought I'd share. Go fuck yourself. Dude, that is absolute genius. And now I just got paranoid because I said what fucking school you went to and all that shit. I hope you don't get in trouble. But if you somehow your woman is listening to this, a guy does something like that, not because he's being a dick. It's because he cares for you. And uh, we don't know how to. Uh, we, we, we don't have those skills. How, how do you tell somebody that? There's no way to do it. I think what he did was genius. Nobody got fucking hurt. You felt great about yourself. He cared about you enough, sweetheart, in case you're listening, that he came up with the plan that, you know, if he put it in another area, he could have, like, whacked JFK. So there you go. He came up with an enigma wrapped up in a riddle, however the fuck that goes. And uh, and you look even better. I would... Um, is this a trap? Oh, Billy boy. Oh, Danny boy, the lights, the lights are calling you. I love the podcast. I hope you can give me some perspective on this issue. I am in my early 30s, and I've been married for five years. My wife and I recently have been having a sexual resurgence in our relationship. After a big lull caused by the birth of our two kids and me putting on some extra weight, that's very honest, uh, we are back to fucking as much or more than we did when we first started dating. You know, that was coming off like really like uh, you were a mature man and then you went right down to my level. You know, after the birth of our two kids, there's been a sexual resurgence and, uh, you know, I put on some extra weight, but uh, dropped a few pounds and we're back to fucking as much as we used to. Um, here's a tip for married men. If you want more sex out of your wife, get your ass to the gym. It worked for me. There you go. There you go. Here's a guy practicing what I have preached for the six fucking years that I've been doing this podcast. By the way, next month is the six-year anniversary of me starting this podcast. Okay? So I am expecting some, um, I don't know what, some sort of congratulations. I should have done it yet last year when it was the five-year anniversary. Um, so this guy's going to the gym. That's right. He's getting the pecs going. He's fighting off the man tits, you know, he's, he's fucking not having that big, uh, f former fucking, uh, rock star goddamn gut. You got to get rid of that shit and you'll live longer. I read something one time or overheard in the bar knowing, knowing me that every extra pound of fat that you have is, is, is five miles of capillaries that your heart has to pump blood through. Just saying. Extra five pounds, 25 more miles of capillaries. So you can imagine if you're 30 pounds overweight, holy fucking shit, that's a, hundred, that's a fucking road trip, 150 miles. You got to get it off. Um, that's why you always see little old ladies and little old men. You don't see jolly old fat 90-year-old guys. You don't. They're gone. You know? Other than Bill Russell, have you ever seen like a fucking 70-year-old seven-footer? There's a reason for that. Your heart has to fucking pump all the way down to the tippy toes. Okay. Also, my wife has been open and willing to do any manner, manner of depraved sexual shit that I can think of. Jesus, dude. He goes, I am living the dream. 
I feel like I won the wife lottery. Well, I would say you do. If she's a great mother, too, that's phenomenal. So he goes, so here's the issue. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going to guess that she wants to bring somebody else into the bedroom. I'm going to guess that you fucking open Pandora's box. And the way this is read, if it's another woman, you don't give a shit. I'm guessing she wants another dude. That's what I'm guessing. She wants a little rotisserie action there. little Boston market. Um, <laughs> here we go. So here's the issue. Um, she has recently been saying that she thinks it would be really hot if I fucked another woman in front of her. Oh, oh, that went the, oh, an entirely different direction. She is clear that she doesn't want to threesome. She doesn't want to participate. She just wants to be there. Apparently, this is a fairly common fetish known as being a cuck queen. Did you spell it right? C-U-C-K queen. A cuck queen. All right, people. This is the first word I've learned the definition to since, uh, what is it, buggering? Being a, uh, getting buggered? Anyways, he says, now I'm a guy. Now I'm a guy, so obviously I'm into variety, and the idea is intriguing. And like I said, she's willing to do basically anything I want to do in the bedroom. So it seems only fair that I would do what I can to fulfill her sexual fantasies. Still, this seems like a bad idea to me. Exactly. Great instinct, sir. I don't know what a reaction is going to be. I don't want to jeopardize my marriage for something like this. What do you think, Bill? Should I just go for it or listen to the voice in my head that says this is a bad idea? If I go for it, how would you suggest actually finding women, a woman who is open to the idea of being fucked in front of my wife? Thanks. All right. Here we go. Sir, you're 100% right. You can't fucking do this. And, and all the married guys out there who are like, Dude, what are you out of your fucking mind? I do that in a fucking second. Fucking second. I know this chick at the office. Not only she fucking banged me in front of the whole fucking office. Hey, love of my life. Look at me over here. I'm fucking banging. Right? All of those guys. Those mouth breathing morons. You know? Who piss on the side of the road when there's a Wendy's with the fucking public bathroom right there. All of those guys. Don't listen to them. Sir, you're 100% right. Some shit should just remain a fantasy. Okay? Um, your parents. Okay? You have kids. Okay? And when that happens, there's a certain level of uh, maturity that you have to fucking have. Okay? You can't be walking around in the goddamn gimp outfit when at any second your fucking kids can open the fucking door to your bedroom. You know what I'm saying? And it's just going to be, uh, and you're also introducing the chance of you catching a fucking venereal disease. Okay. Cause first of all, any woman that's going to allow you to do that is going to be a freak on some fucking level. And evidently wearing a condom, you can still get herpes. I don't know how it fucking parrot troops down on your ball bag. I have no idea, but evidently you can. All right. And I got to tell you some fucking things some doors should just remain closed um i don't know how i would try to make up in that area <clears throat> i was gonna say if she wanted to fuck another dude then you could just act like you were another dude and say a bunch of different dude shit to her while you had her bent over and she's not looking at you so she could feel you know you know maybe wear a different cologne <laughs> But this whole, uh, you know, why don't you just get a blow-up doll and fuck that in front of her? Huh? You like that? That sound of the fucking... Huh? You like that shit? Oh, yeah. Take it. You whore. Right? Maybe you could do that. <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you, dude, but I'll tell you right now, your instinct to not do it is 100% correct. All right? You did hit the lottery with this woman. And this is another deal, dude. It, you could be gradually opening this shit up. You know, women are phenomenal masters of manipulation. OK, this might be her roundabout way of saying, I want to fuck another guy. OK, and what she's going to do is get you dirty first. 
Right. Just like politics. We can't have this guy get into the Oval Office unless we got something on him. She's doing she might be doing that same thing. Now, this is just conspiracy theory. Don't look sideways at your wife as you're eating a bowl of fucking corn checks. I'm just throwing this shit out here. All right. This might be her roundabout way of fucking getting her to be able to have a fucking. All right. You get to fuck one. All right. <laughs> and not only does she got to fu going to fuck him, you got to sit there and watch it. You know. Don't do it. Do not introduce other fucking people into your relationship. All right. Your relationship when it comes to sex, and if it's going to fucking work, has to be a secret society. As far as my fucking skills go, my skill set, you know, I show up to the gym. People know what I do. <laughs> I got one mid range jumper. That's all I'm taking. Everybody knows if you can stop it, you can stop it. That's what the fuck I'm coming with. All right. I don't even know how the fuck I went into that analogy. I was supposed to be making fun of me in the fucking bedroom. I have my little bag of tricks. It's all I got. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, here, here's something, because I've never done shit like that. I never went into that area of fucking freak week. I never did that. All right. Um, and I think if you are in a fucking healthy relationship at some point, both men and women do want a variety. And at some point, it's going to come up and you are going to talk about it and be like, ah, you know, maybe we went to Vegas, maybe. Uh, but the, but the, and then in the end, you know, usually after you've banged and got that urge out of your system, you lay there and you just look at each other. Yeah. Now, what the fuck are we thinking? We can't do that. It's fucking gross. We can't do we like they would told. And it's not. I'm not trying to judge people who do shit like that, but it would totally it. You're, you know what it is? It's a house of cards and you're pulling one out way down near the foundation. It might stay up, but the whole thing might come down and you got some kids in there. So let me ask you this. At the risk of turning this podcast into uh, a complete freak show. Not freak show, just I don't know, because I, I really don't judge people what the fuck they do. Um, is there anybody out there that is married, has a couple of kids, and uh, has has had this scenario? You know, has your wife been cool with it? Did you just bring some girl in and you fucking banged her? You know? Well, what exactly, what is the etiquette when you bang another woman in front of your wife? You know, is she just sitting there watching? You know? Like she's watching a chess match. Are you allowed to throw us some looks like, huh? See that? You like that move there, sweetheart? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I, I imagine that there's a bunch of rules. You're not allowed to do it missionary style. If you come, you have to look at me. Don't look at her. I mean, that that scene like there's all these like, you know what it is? It's like you're starting a new sport. It's kind of like MMA when it first started out and you could punch, uppercut somebody in the balls and gouge their right. You could do whatever the fuck you wanted. And then they'd be like, all right, all right, we need some parameters here. Dana White came in and said, hey, no more fucking uppercuts to the undercarriage. No more eye gouging. No kicking in the face when the guy's on the ground. No punches to the back of the head. He made it civilized. So I imagine that they, there has to be some sort of, um, you know, civility to the fucking another woman in front of your in front of your wife um look who's kidding who that would be absolutely phenomenal but uh i i just i just couldn't imagine you know my woman that afterwards afterwards and the woman leaves and then i take a shower right and then we're sitting down you know, eating SpaghettiOs. Um, like, I would so be praying that she started the conversation. If that she was going like, yeah, I thought that was just, wow, I thought that was really, that was really neato. <laughs> <laughs> but the absolute fucking worst is if there would just be complete awkward silence and then all of a sudden she starts tearing up. Right. And now here you are going, but honey, you told me to do it. And the fucking kids are sitting there. 
I just didn't think, you know, I know it was my idea, but I just didn't think that you were going to enjoy it that much. You know, you don't come that fast with me. The fucking kid's sitting there <laughs> looking like that kid in The Shining, you know, when he's fucking looking up with that red rum face. And I'll tell you right now, that would be a classic fucking 180 that could possibly happen because of uh, the delicacy of women's emotions. And I don't mean that like they're weaker or whatever. There's more tapped into them or whatever. And like I said, this also could be some fucking top shelf pimp shit that she's doing where she really wants to go fuck another guy. And she knows, well, the male ego, I can't come at him with this. You know, and if her mindset is like, hey, it's just sex. She's trying to get you on the same tape, uh, page. She has to get you fucking, she's got to get you dirty first. So um, I don't know. But like I said, if there's people out there who've done this shit, please email me. Because I'd, I'd love to know. Um, give me a quick scenario of what happened and then give me a long detailed it's not the act i get it the picture's been painted i want to know the aftermath i want to know afterwards like what the fu how the fuck i want to know what was the first topic that was discussed other than the fact that your wife had an outer body experience of as far as like the whole intercourse with you you know And what is she doing? Is she saving this up to think about later? Or is she literally engaging from across the fucking room? You know? Basically doing the sexual version of the guy who goes to the game with his face painted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Great email, by the way, sir. Great fucking email. You want to bang another woman in front of your wife because that's what she's into? Well, God bless you. Put on a fucking j Gators, bitches, wear jimmies. Put on a jimmy and have a good fucking time. Oh, you know what? I didn't answer his last one. He said, if I go for it, how would you suggest actually finding women who is open to the idea of being fucked in front of my wife? Yeah, I mean, you're going you're gonna to have to find somebody who's... Uh... I, would, I would try and find somebody who was really advanced in their career. You know? like a lawyer, they, they have to have a certain level of job. I wouldn't go on fucking Craigslist and sign, find somebody who works at a Baskin Robbins who's down for doing something like that. that. You know what I mean? You're trying to go out and find the cleanest person you can. And uh, I would just lay it out on the table, put it on the table, and I'd have everybody get fucking tested. And then I'd still wear a condom and then I'd have at it. And then, you know, as far as the SpaghettiO conversation afterwards, that's on you.